State Cougars were the surprise team of the Pac-10 this year. Picked to finish last in the conference, the Cougs, catapulted by Price's high-octane offense and never-say-die attitude, battled for the league title and are on the verge of only their third 10-win season in history. Last year, Purdue rode a cool breeze all the way to the Rose Bowl. With the departure of the remarkable breeze, the winds of fortune shifted this year for the Boilermakers. Still, Joe Tiller's vaunted offense had enough gale force to produce yet another winning season and a school record fifth straight bowl appearance. Purdue and Joe Tiller, Washington State and Mike Price, friendly rivals in a West Texas Bowl showdown. style play to a special tune, a special flavor as well, as we're happy to present again this afternoon the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl from El Paso, Texas. First meeting ever between teams from the Pac-10 and the Big Ten, Washington State, and the Boilermakers of Purdue. We welcome you to El Paso. Purdue coming in with a six and five record and the Cougars of Washington State, a great year, a nine and two mark after the 11 game regular season had been concluded. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist. This game first played in El Paso in 1935, first televised on CBS in 1968, and we have been pleased to present it to you every year since our 34th straight telecast of the Sun Bowl from El Paso. I'm joined, as always, by Todd Blackledge. A fun week for all of us, Todd, and these two teams really are mirror-like in, in the, how they play the game. Well, they are. I mean, the head coaches kind of trace their roots back together. Offensively, very similar. One back sets, three and four wide receivers, receiver formations like to spread the field. They run the ball a little bit, but they really emphasize the passing game. On the other side of the ball, smallish defenses built for speed, very aggressive. Both these teams started blitzing the quarterback as soon as they got off the bus. Well, there is, however, a decided difference in the experience at the quarterback mm -hmm. position. And that's going to be key today. Purdue's Kyle Orton, a very talented guy, but he's a true freshman just making his third start. Jason Gesser, a much more seasoned quarterback, but make no mistake, both of these guys will be under tremendous pressure today. Both teams will go after the quarterback. The key is which guy can make the most plays one-on-one -on -one against that pressure defense. Both the Cougars and the Boilermakers do feature aggressive defenses. They've excelled at taking the ball away. Yeah, two of the best in the country at forcing turnovers, but one problem, you've got to be able to convert when you force turnovers. Washington State got 93 points off of their 35 turnovers, but a problem for Purdue all year. Second best in the country forcing 36 turnovers, only 68 points. The five games they lost this year, they forced 18 turnovers but could only muster 25 points. Tough thing to do when you play that well on defense. Well, a little bit of a cold front has moved through El Paso. There is a chill in the air, but it's still the Sun Bowl, and we'll return with more right after this. CBA Sports presentation of the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl is sponsored by Wells Fargo Bank, www.wellsfargo.com. Your friends from Exxon and Mobil who remind you to use SpeedPass, today's way to pay. And by Chevy, the cars you can depend on, the cars that last, will be there. Hi, I'm Dick Kovacevic, CEO of Wells Fargo, sponsor of the Sun Bowl. 140 years ago, a Wells Fargo stagecoach ride across Texas took nine days, but your money arrived safely in the care of Wells Fargo. Today, we're still the trusted connection between people and their money, providing banking and other financial services through our 6,000 stores, our phone banks, ATMs, and the Internet. On behalf of our team members across this great country, Happy New Year and enjoy the game. AOL keeps me closer to the people I love. Everyone I know is on AOL. I have a best friend that lives in Denver. With AOL, I talk to her every day. We send pictures of our kids to their grandparents. Oh, my grandpa loves AOL. He's on all the time. Opening emails like Christmas. You know, you just never know what's coming. Definitely keeps me connected to family and friends. I mean, I'm even on my grandma's buddy list. Am I on your buddy list? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. 
we're making our way up the hill, I can hear gunshots echoing in the distance. Let's go, soldiers. You will not have a whole lot of time. Fires, once you have that magazine, lock it. I'm a little bit nervous because I've never done this before. Left side is ready. Right side is ready. The middle is ready. It's all about precision and confidence. Log on. Watch Michelle hit the mark. Only at GoArmy.com. Spin, spin, spin the globe. It's your turn to spin the globe. All around the world, Siemens provides hospitals and doctors with the tools they need to make the right decisions right away. From diagnostics to patient information to care management, we're doing our part to help people everywhere feel better. Spin, spin, spin the globe. It's your turn to spin the globe. Cold where you are? Then come discover the warmth of Juarez and El Paso. You'll enjoy great food, lots of entertainment, all the color of Mexico, and the rich heritage of Texas. With sunshine over 300 days a year, there's no better place under the sun. Juarez and El Paso, two great cities, one great vacation. See why Simon Baker was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actor. Police! He actually enjoyed hitting me. I'm here to help you. The Guardian, CBS Tuesday. Welcome back to the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl in El Paso, the first meeting ever between Purdue and Washington State. But certainly not the first meeting ever between these two respective coaches. Their friendship dates back to the early 70s. They served as assistants then, and Joe Tiller served with Mike Price at Washington State in 1990. Mike's always been a very uh, uh, open guy. I've always appreciated that about him. And uh, he's just one of those guys, once you work with him, you develop some respect for him. and. Uh, you kind of, you, you kind of take pride. At least I have in him, and it's probably mutual. But you kind of yeah. take pride in what they accomplish. You say, "Hey, we yeah. used to coach together." You, you talk about the success that the other guy has. When it, when I see him do good, you know, it makes it makes me feel good. And uh, I think the thing that I admire so much about Joe is is his intelligence. You know, he really knows the game of football. And when I had an opportunity to hire him, uh, when I got my first head job in Division One. And there was no question about it. I, I was honored to have him on our, work with our staff for a couple of years and, and really helped me get off to a good start there at Washington State. And of course, uh, um, you know, I knew it was just a matter of time. Everyone knew it was a matter of time before people found out about what a great football coach Joe Tiller is. <laughs> Jack Elway was one of the most, is one of the most unusual, different people uh, that I've ever known in my entire life. He's passed away now, but uh, a great, great friend. Uh, we were run actually when we were together at Washington State. We were running the Veer offense. Uh, Jim Sweeney and we had the Veer offense, and LA was a great uh, offensive. He was our offensive coordinator and uh, ran the Veer offense. So we weren't throwing the ball until he got out of Washington State and went to North Region San Jose. Did he learn the spread offense? Probably pretty. Pretty I'll bet you they'd be pretty close. They'd be pretty close. Probably our protections uh, a little bit, you know. One of the things Because he really put the protections in, changed my protections when I got to Washington State, so. Yeah, we're Pretty trying to get them months. confused, and geez, <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to get your guy confused. He's the freshman now. <laughs> uh, well, he'll be easier to confuse than your guy, <laughs> that's for sure. But I, I, I'll bet the books would be very similar. Um, you know, I, basically, I have the Washington State playbook. Mm -hmm. I've never thrown one out in my no, life. he hasn't thrown anything out. <laughs> I I'm haven't. telling you, <laughs> this guy has got every moving box that yeah, he's ever had yeah. from every move. So. One, two, three, five, 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 five four, Washington State, win the victory. How about that? Not bad, huh? Not bad. Pretty good. I whistle that, you know, which is pisses me off. <laughs> when I go from one end of the field to the other to do our, our field goal at the end of the deal, I have my whistle and I go do 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 Oh, you do? I do. <laughs> and Gary Emanuel, who coached for Mike, comes over and says, why do you always do that Washington State thing? I says, 
Catchy tune, isn't it? <laughs> well, you can only imagine how much fun, Todd, we've had being around those two men this week. Yeah, they're genuine guys. And, you know, in a lot of bowl situations, head coaches and their staffs have to do things together just because that's the way it goes. But these guys were looking forward to doing things together. And I think it was an enjoyable week for both of these coaches and their families. Joe Tiller, Mike Price, they represent the best of this sport. We'll return to the Wells Fargo. Welcome back to the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl. El Paso, the Golden Knights Army Parachute Team, a precision team, entertaining the crowd here. Eight of them have just uh, departed the plane and now coming down toward the middle of the field. Well, we've got both sidelines covered today, and let's begin with coverage from Heisman Trophy winner Andre Ware. Andre. For the Washington State Cougars, head coach Mike Price is known for developing good football coaches. On his current staff, he has three defensive line coach Rob Adke, offensive coordinator Mike Leffenseller, and quarterback coach Aaron Taylor Price. His son are currently on his coaching staff. Coach Price's roots can also be traced to the Purdue bench, whereas head coach Joe Tiller, as you guys mentioned, was his offensive coordinator from 1989 to 1990. Assistant coaches Blaine Bennett and Gary Emanuel have also coached under Price. Guys with so many coaches having ties with Coach Price, you just wonder if they're going to know which sideline to go to today. Over to Jill Arrington on the Purdue sideline. Well, thank you, Andre. This Purdue team has changed a lot. Last year's Purdue total offense ranked fourth in the nation. This year, they're 105th. The biggest reason for the change is an inexperienced offense. They lost quarterback Drew Brees and four offensive linemen to the NFL. The Coach Tiller told his team that he's proud of what they've accomplished and a win today would be a great springboard to next year. Vern. All right, Jill, thank you. Stay warm, both of you down there on the sidelines today. Washington State Cougars and the Purdue Boilermakers. And from West Lafayette, Indiana, the Boilermakers of Purdue with a six and five season record. Toss of the coin getting ready in the center of the field. And here come the Cougars of Washington State. Only losses this year. Tough loss to Oregon and a loss at Washington. And a special moment for the coin toss today. The Sun Bowl Committee has invited a New York City fireman and a New York City policeman to come and toss the coin. And what uh, what a wonderful week they have had and we have had meeting them. That's Detective Kenneth Pepe, a nine-year veteran of the 109th Precinct from Flushing, New York. And also firefighter Woody McHale, a 15-year veteran now with the Manhattan Command Fire Marshal's office. And Woody is so fired up. I mean, he was a little late getting out to the center of the field because he wanted to run out on the field with the Washington State team. He was leading the team out, and we've heard him for two days, and he's just, this is the first full football game he's had a chance to watch this whole year because of how busy and tied up he's been. He is really excited for today. 42 degrees. Uh, the term Sun Bowl has a, a degree of irony to it today. It has been in the 60s, and all of a sudden last night, a front move through. Forecast for the day, cloudy. Washington State won the toss, and they will receive. Head coach Mike Price now in his 13th year as the boss of the Cougars, had them in the Rose Bowl. At the conclusion of the 97 season, they've suffered through three difficult years, but uh, this year, an amazing turnaround, nine and two, and uh, they really think they've got the, the, the best right. of seasons ahead of them. Yeah, they think next year is really going to be their year, and they they kind of did it in an amazing fashion because they were decimated with injuries and still won nine games. Joe Tiller in his fifth full season is the head coach at Purdue and has led them to five consecutive bowl appearances, including the Rose Bowl last year. See his record at Purdue, 39 and 21, came having served six years as the head coach in Laramie at the University of Wyoming. Played in this stadium a few times against yes. the Texas El Paso Miners. Travis Dorch will kick off for Purdue. 
Billy Newman is the deep man. This would be, uh, if he does get it, only his fourth kickoff return of the season. Eric Coleman is also back. Newman drifts back, and Dorch plants one nine yards deep. It'll be a touchback. And the Cougars of Washington State will take over at their own 20-yard line. The wind is rather significant uh, down on the field before the game and blowing in the direction of that kick. So Jason Gesser and the Washington State offense will start against the wind here in the opening possession. Jason Gesser now the fourth highest uh, achieving quarterback in Washington State history. See the season he had 2,729 yards, 25 touchdowns, and only 10 interceptions. A junior from Honolulu, Hawaii. And the one back set, two wide receivers. From the 20, there's the toss left to Dave Minnick. And Minnick is popped immediately and loses a yard as Nico Kudavides got to him first, number 34. Let's check this Washington State offense. You've met uh, Dave Minnick, the offensive line, Parrish, Hollenbeck, Hunt, Roche, and Armstrong. Dave Minnick is the senior running back. Jerome Riley, Mike Bush, the wideouts, Colin Henderson, also one of the three flanked uh, receivers, and Mike Baldwin is the tight end. Second down and 10 officially. Slip the ball inside to Dave Minnick, and he struggles for three. Let's check the uh, Purdue defensive 11. Up front, it'll be Phillips, Terrell, Brandon Johnson starts for Matt Mitrione, who decided to end his collegiate career. Kudavides, Odom, and Landon Johnson. And in the uh, secondary, Woodyard, Schweiger, Farrell, and Rogers. Third and seven, Washington State. Fine conversion average for the season. Gesser wants to throw, flip it right side to Rome Riley. He is going to make the grab, but then be brought down short of the first down by Brandon Johnson. Just mentioned him, number 65. Johnson getting a start today in place of Matt Mitrione, the senior. And that was a great play by Brandon Johnson because it was a safety blitz, and he dropped out from his defensive tackle position and made the tackle on a wide receiver. So a great way for him to start the ball game. Seth Morales back to return the punt of Alan Cox. This one hangs up. Morales grabs it at the 28. Seth Morales on the reception. Moves across the 35 to the 36-yard line. 44-yard punt and eight on the return. So Purdue holds. And here's a young man, freshman from Altoona, Pennsylvania, uh, Altoona, Iowa. Right. I knew Crazy I was going to get confused. Him to <laughs> Absolutely. Kyle Orton getting only his third start. He came on in the second half of a game against Michigan State, replaced Brandon Hance, was named the starter for the next two games, and uh, Brandon Hance has decided to transfer out to a school on the West Coast. And they really like him. Uh, they are very pleased with his progress, and really the month he's had to prepare for this bowl game has been the best thing that could have happened to Kyle Orton. Montreal Lowe, play fake on first down. Orton goes deep into double coverage, and he's got Stan deferred. Hit him in the hands, could not hang on. The pass incomplete, but a deep thrust on the first play by the Purdue Boilermakers. Well, the Purdue coaches told us that they were going to throw the ball a lot at Standiford, and the first play they go after Marcus Trufant, the best cover corner for Washington State, and almost a big completion, but a, a nice throw by Kyle Orton as you look at his numbers. Not a real high percentage, but again, he's a true freshman, and this is only his third start. Out of the spread on second down and 10 from the 36. Joey Harris has come in the backfield, and there's uh, <laughs> Randall Smith came uh, jumping across or running across. On the defense, five yard penalty, still second down. Now let's check this Purdue offense as they walk off the five yard penalty. The offensive line, Lockheed. Bruskowski is the center, Kitchell, Butler. Montreal Lowe in the backfield, John Standiford, Taylor Stubblefield, and Seth Morales, the wideouts, and the tight end. He is an outstanding tight end, Tim Stratton, fifth-year senior. Second down and five. Horton, right side, knocked down before it got to the intended receiver. 
defensively for Washington State. Tupo, Tupai, Ryan Long, and Isaac Brown up front. Randall Smith, No Way, and Genitone. And in the secondary, Trufant, Lamont Thompson, eight interceptions this year, Billy Newman, and Jason David. Randall Smith, number 30. Third down. Orton with pressure. Picked off. And here goes Washington State's Jason David. David in for the touchdown. We saw the graphic on the screen right before that play. Washington State, the best team in the Pac-10 on third down, only allowing 27% conversion. This was an all-out blitz, single coverage on the outside. And David just read the quarterback and made a great break on the football inside of Seth Morales. He watched the quarterback, he squatted on the play, Pat Bennett with pressure. Extra point from Drew Dunning is up and good. Jason David's second interception of the season. More significantly, that is the fifth interception returned for a touchdown this season by the Cougars. Their eighth defensive touchdown overall. you can depend on the cars that last Chevy will be there you like simple better than complicated you like quick better than slow you like easy better than hard so now pay with speed pass at both Exxon and mobile it's fast it's free and it links to a check card or major credit card you already have Toll free or visit speedpass.com. We're drivers too. Pavilion 7975 PC featuring the Intel Pentium 4 processor and the PSC 950 all-in-one printer. You can create and share studio quality prints. How will you use them? Save up to $250 by mail on HP digital photography products like the HP Pavilion 7975 PC featuring the Intel Pentium 4 processor. The regular season comes to a smashing conclusion. When the Patriots collide with the Panthers, the Jaguars battle the Bears, and then the Jets rumble with the Raiders. Sunday on CBS. Welcome back. Washington State leading 7-0. Jason David with the interception return. That's five times this season they've accomplished that. Two fumble returns, one blocked punt. And uh, that helps you to a 9-2 and two Yes, season it record. does. It sure does. And it's, it's part of that aggressive mentality, attacking the offense, knocking the ball loose, converting turnovers into points. Adam Holliday will kick off. He is the kickoff specialist, and he excels at this. 29 touchbacks this season. This will not be one of them. Joey Harris, number 25. Contact made inside the 20. The tackle completed at the 18-yard line. Now let's go back and look at Jason David's effort on the touchdown. Well, first of all, watch Pat Bennett, 46. The middle linebacker, a freshman, he gets the pressure, and that forces Orton maybe to not see David squatting on that out route. We talked about the familiarity of these two programs, and that time Washington State guessed right on where Orton would go with the football against the seven-man blitz. Thank you. 
Offside on the kick. Five yard penalty, and they're going to re kick. I think to give Joey Harris another shot with the football. He's the the fastest guy on this Purdue team, a track star, and uh, a guy who uh, probably healthier now than he's been at later stages of the season, and give him another crack with the football in the return. Harris for the season, 19 yards. And we'll uh, give it a redo. Sometimes in bowl games, you see breakdowns in the kicking game because of the layoff, you know, and, and special teams is something you work on a lot, but you don't do live very often. You don't go down and cover kickoffs live or do those kind of things. And sometimes you see big plays happen in the special teams during the bowl season. Holiday from the 30. And this one's going to go out of bounds. So uh, things went awry for Washington State. We'll go down to Andre Ware. Todd, you talked about it earlier about the pressure of both these teams, Washington State having the success early in the ball game. Now they feel like they can get the true, fre the true freshman quarterback for Purdue. You're going to see a lot more pressure, especially on third down situations. Back up to you guys. Now Andre knows that as well as anybody. As a young quarterback, if they have success going after you early, you better believe they're going to keep coming after you until you prove that you can handle it. Plus 12 for the season, 36 turnovers, and equally significant the number of points they've yeah. gotten off the turnovers. And as Todd said at the uh, beginning of the broadcast, that's been a major difference in how Purdue has handled their turnover opportunities. So here's Orton again, this time from the 40 after the out-of-bounds kickoff, and he goes from the spread. Five-man defensive line, they're expecting run. Montrell low, here's a reverse, they're going to pass it. Throw it deep, and Stanford's there. The ball is tipped and almost intercepted. Eric Coleman, number 27, had a chance at it. This play took a little bit too long to develop, and it allowed Marcus Trufant to get back and make the play. He was beat. Now, this is Stanford. Watch. He's going to act like he falls down here and then gets up. Watch Stanford. He's going to go down. Oh I, oh, I did that on purpose. And now he gets up, but instead of running, he stops. And that enables Trufant to come back and make the play. If he takes off and runs, he probably runs away from Trufant. And Purdue gets a big play. But a great recovery by Marcus Trufant after he was beat. Chris James with the throw. Here's Montrell. Low going to the right side. Slips a tackle and then knocked out of bounds at the 43-yard line by D.D. Oshawano. Uh, Colorado State earlier this week and Marshall that would have been fun to do 64 61 <laughs> they were getting beat 38 to 8 at halftime came back player down for Purdue Montreal low is uh, he's an effective back in this offense because he's He's powerful, he's small, kind of built low to the ground at 5'8", 199 pounds. And in this kind of a spread offense, as you see Sean Ruffalo, the left guard being helped off the field. But Montreal low, it kind of hides in behind those linemen. You, you just want to find some creases in the running game. He's been very productive in his career at Purdue. Low listed at 5'8", 199. Must say he appears a little smaller than that. <laughs> Media guide height. Third down. Seven nothing Washington State with the lead here in the early going. Orton comes left side. Catch is made by Taylor Stubblefield, number 21. And that's going to be good for a first down at the WSU 45 yard line. Nice conversion. Nice play that time by Kyle Orton. You know, he's had a little bit of a rough start. Nobody likes to have an interception return for a touchdown, but he hung in there and made a nice throw on third down and moves the chains. And the coaches at Purdue told us the two guys they're going to throw to today are Standiford and Stubblefield. They came on strong at the end of the year. One's a sophomore, Standiford and Stubblefield, a redshirt freshman. That's the future for Purdue football. First and ten, Purdue. And uh, whistle this one dead, bring it back. Flag storm before the snap. Our officiating crew today from Conference USA. Here's Randy Smith, the uh, Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. Yeah. 
And here's a list of the uh, entire crew. McMahon, Hunter, Bergman, Skelton, Lombardo, and Tom Compton. First down, 15 after the five-yard penalty. Ball back at the midfield strike. Low, driven down, no gain. And time now for the Exxon and Mobile Virtual Playbook. When we talked about these teams being mirrors of themselves, we named this play the Purdue Fast Break, but you could have used this for Washington State. You'll see this today, four receivers running down the seams. They got to avoid collisions, stay in their lanes, stay separated as they go down the field, and then try to put the free safety in a bind. Make him go one way, throw back the other way. We will see both of the teams on the field today offensively try to throw the ball into the seams. No gain on the last play. It is second down and 15. Joey Harris is in the backfield with Cedric Brown, and we've got uh, another infraction. Now, the second time we've seen that. This time it was James Price trying to time the blitz. Yard penalty, still second down. And they're trying to hit this on the move. You want to hit a blitz going forward. Watch James Price right here, number five. He's just going to try to time the snap count and hit it on the run. But he guessed wrong. Murskowski, the, the center, the best lineman up there, he's got to be aware of that as well, as does Kyle Wharton, that they're trying to guess on that snap count. Back to the original line of scrimmage, second down and 10. Cougars bring four. Orton has to scramble. And he is uh, caught after about a half yard gain. That will not go as a sack, but uh, close to it. This Purdue team has been really, they've really struggled with yeah. their offensive line. They've given up 37 sacks this year. Yeah, well, Jill talked about the difference in the numbers from last year to this year. And, and the biggest key has been the offensive line. Four guys, not only that started last year, but that started for three years. So, I mean, they played right along with Drew Brees for the last three years. And now all four of them off to the NFL. And even though it's still late in the year, it's still a new offensive line. Third down, here comes the blitz. Orton has to go across the middle quickly. Finds his tight end, Stratton, but that is short of the necessary yardage, and it'll be fourth down. Billy Newman, number 10, makes the catch, or makes the tackle. For Washington State, making the stop, Billy Newman. You know, one of the things that you look at with a new offensive line is sack numbers. Look at the last three years compared to this year. One out of 11 pass attempts resulted in a sack. Now, some of that's the offensive line. Some of it is a new quarterback as well, because sometimes quarterbacks hang on to the football longer than they should. You can tell I'm the son of an offensive line coach. <laughs> it's not always the line's fault. And here's the punt by Dortch. The fair catch taken by Eric Coleman. And he took the fair catch inside the 10. Nice, effective play. Impala. My dad had one of these. Really? Wow. I just have some very nice memories from that car. Did his have the smoke lenses in the front, rear deck spoiler, 200 horsepower V6 engine, 16 inch aluminum wheels. Well, I just love that they brought the Impala back. Whenever you come here. Chevy Impala LS. The feeling never fades. You're gonna love it. This is my car. Impala. We'll be there. The 5-0 call him a criminal. Damn, that's cool. The ladies call him a player, but his crew just call him crazy. Martin Lawrence is living large. Can we get a oop up in here? What's the worst that can happen? Rated PG-13. Rent or buy it Tuesday. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Go! Go! No, no. Get Selsun Power. Oh. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue. Man, that tastes awesome. Get Selsun Power. Hey, Hallie Eisenberg, drinking a Pepsi. Actually, this isn't a Pepsi. It's new Pepsi Twist with lemon. And I'm not Hallie Eisenberg. <laughs> I'm Hallie Berry. Drinking Pepsi Twist. Well, it's not exactly Pepsi Twist. It's Diet Pepsi Twist. And I'm not exactly Hallie Berry. You know. I'm Barry Bostwick. Who is Barry Bostwick? Like twists? Training Pepsi Twist and regular and diet. A lemon twist on that great Pepsi taste. Harm's ex-girlfriend just turned up dead, and all the clues point to him. You have an alibi? I know you don't have one, Commander. Trisha Yearwood guests an unforgettable Jack. CBS Tuesday.
Hi, this is Travis Dorsch of the Purdue University football team. On behalf of our team, I'd like to wish everyone back home in Bozeman, Montana and West Lafayette, Indiana, and to all our troops overseas, a happy holiday season. Ray Guy Award winner this year, Travis Dorsch. Here's uh, Dave Minnick, number 34, on the first down and 10 play, gets across the 10 and out to the 11-yard line. It was really fun talking to Dave Minnick yesterday, wasn't it? You know, a guy who they call him grandpa on the team. He's going to turn 28 on January the 18th. Spent four years in the Marine Corps and uh, just has been a, an inspirational leader for this football team. Missed three games with a knee injury earlier in the year, but uh, was always there supporting and leading the football team. He's the lone setback on second down and a seven from the 11. Guesser. Nance is out of trouble, heads left, pulls up and lobs it out, and that one nearly picked off. Very dangerous. <laughs> Farrell was very close to yeah. him. Jason Gesser, one of the things that Purdue coaches were really impressed with him about is his ability to make plays out of the system, you know, when the play breaks down. Watch Jason Gesser leave the pocket. At first, it looks like he's going to run, and then he decided, stay behind the line of scrimmage, see if I can make a play. I think Idell got a, a hand on the football, and Deontay Farrell almost came up with a big interception for Purdue. Third and seven for Washington State. They lead it by seven on a uh, return of an interception by Jason David. Here's Gesser. Intercepted. That one's picked off. I think Washington State got it back. Rodgers with the interception and then the fumble. Yes, indeed. This was a blitz by Purdue. They brought the safeties, and Antoine Rogers makes the interception, and Mike Bush, the basketball player, who was the intended receiver, is going to strip the ball. Watch it, Bush, after the play, strip the ball out of Antoine Rogers, and Washington State comes back up with the football. There's the interception. Mike Bush, the right hand over the top, strips it out. And a big break for the Cougars. So back-to-back -back turnovers in the same play. The interception and then the fumble. And a first down 10 results at the 29-yard line. Here's Gesser. Oh, what a blitz. That's a fault. No, they're calling that incomplete. Arm was coming forward, but Aiken Adell got there. Their best pass rusher, their MVP. Eight sacks coming into the ball game today. He's coming from the left of your screen. Just a quick inside move. Ran right by Joey Hollenbeck, the left guard. A little twist move, which brought the end inside. And you saw the quickness and the explosiveness of Adell. Adell, one of 17 young men from the state of Texas who play for Purdue. He uh, played his high school ball at Irving MacArthur, already a graduate of Purdue University. Here's Gesser, flips it out left side, incomplete. Jerome Riley, well, an unusual first and last name, Aiken, A-K-I-N, Adele, A-Y-O-D-E-L-E, -E, and uh, it's an African word that means a warrior who's gone through many wars and has never been defeated. It's a pretty cool name. Yes, it is. <laughs> You mentioned MacArthur High School also played at Coffeyville Junior College before coming to Purdue. Third down. There's Adele. Screen pass. Left side. minnick has got it. He's got three men in front. Plunges out of a tackle and is down finally at the 50-yard line. Excellent play call by Mike Price. Purdue showing that they want to come after the quarterback blitz you catch him in a blitz and you throw the screen watch the pressure and Gesser just lets it get to him and at the last minute flicks it out to minute he's got a little wall of blockers out there nice play call against that defensive pressure by Purdue yeah, Dave Minnick uh, Todd said he's going to be 28 years of age married two kids uh, just a wonderful young man First down from the 50-yard line. They flip it out quickly, left side. Jerome Riley, here he goes. Rodgers chasing him. And a flag is down at the 41-yard line. This was a strange play, Vern. Uh, two defenders for Purdue were in perfect position to make the play, and they missed him and ran into each other. 
And I think Mike Bush is going to be called for the holding. The other receiver out there trying to block. He was blocking on Antoine Rogers. But <laughs> how Riley got away from Schweiger. There's the hold by Bush and the block in the back on Antoine Rogers to negate that play. And uh, Gesser knew it, saw it from a distance, so that's a 43-yard gain wiped out. And back-to-back -back plays, you know, we had the screen on third down. That's almost like a screen, a little quick flip to the wide receiver, trying to negate the pressure that Purdue is bringing. That was a pretty good low post move by <laughs> the basketball player. <laughs> but he got ready. caught, yeah. <laughs> First down. First down and 11. And here's Minnick again. He's a, he's a, a plunger. I mean, he just... Great effort. Uh, Mike Bush, starter on the basketball team, averaging ten and a half points per game. And he's a good one. Sat out of football for three years. He will rejoin the basketball team for a game in Southern California on Friday night. From the time they played at Washington in Seattle Husky Stadium, he's played eight games and averaging about ten and a half per game. Second down and six. Gesser. Deep for Bush. And Bush is there! Touchdown is 10th of the season. Forty-six yards. Antoine Rogers is a redshirt freshman, but more importantly, he's only about 6'1". Mike Bush, the basketball player, is 6 foot 6. And on this play, he uses that height to its full advantage. This is not a great throw by Gesser. It's up for grab, but Bush able to adjust to the football and use his big body to keep the defender away. Extra point from Drew Dunning is up and good. 46-yard touchdown reception. Mike Bush makes amends for the holding call in a big way. 14-0 Washington State. And Mike Bush, 10 touchdowns this season. That one for 46 yards, and it, culminated, it was a culmination of a six-play drive, 71 yards, 94 seconds. 14-zip. It was interesting talking to him about why he got back interested in football. He said he always loved football, and he used to just kind of walk by the football coach's office, and he'd see him watching film. He'd just kind of hang out and keep watching film, and kept coming back and back, and finally came out on the team. Here's Taylor Stubblefield, number 21, with the kickoff return. He's got some room. And Stubblefield tackled at the 27-yard line. Curtis Nettles makes the stop. Final uh, Sunday of regular season football. Here's our doubleheader for you. Jacksonville at Chicago, New England, Carolina, Cleveland, Pittsburgh. Broncos at the Colts. And the second game, the Jets go out uh, to the West Coast. Oakland suffered a little hiccup yesterday, and it all begins with the NFL today, Sunday at 12 noon Eastern, next Sunday on CBS. Trailing by 14, Orton on first down. That's Chris Randolph. Here's Montrell Lowe. Oh, that one looked ugly from the get-go. As Lowe was stumbling after he got the uh, handoff, Fred Shavies makes the stop. One thing that Washington State did about midway through the year, they went to a situation where they put five defensive linemen in the game and take out the middle linebacker. This is to help against the run. When they played Oregon earlier in the year, they gave up 446 yards rushing to the Ducks. The next week they played UCLA, they put in this five-man defensive line to help against the run. They played much better, and they, they bring that in in situations where they really expect to run. That time it worked perfectly. Low on first down. He gets into the secondary and motors across the 30 to the 32. Billy Newman, number 10, with the tackle. Now, look at the first five games, under 60 yards per game. And the, the huge, the whopper was 446 yeah. yards given up to Oregon in a loss. And then uh, the last three, 125 of the average. Yeah, and again, right after that, they played UCLA and Deshaun Foster. And even though Foster had 102 yards in the game, he only had 22 in the second half. So much better from that point on. Orton Stubblefield 
slips the tackle and moves it to the 45-yard line. Nice third down play. Lamont Thompson with the tackle. Taylor Stubblefield, number 21. Young man from Yakima, Washington. He actually uh, agreed to attend Washington State, then changed his mind and went to Purdue. Now he's in the slot, a little quick out. Nice throw by Orton, and then a nice spin move. He eludes a defender. That's Lamont Thompson, who's the All-American free safety, but not as used to covering single coverage out there on a wideout. First down and 10, Purdue from the 45. Play fake. Orton rolls out, comes left, incomplete. Uh, just across the 50. Intended for Kevin Noel, number 23. Kevin Noel. Uh, Purdue with a 5-1 uh, and one season start. And uh, they were very productive offensively. They have struggled the last five games, as you can see. And the coaches really felt, even though Brandon Hans had some good games in there at, at early points in the year, that the offense had really started to get stagnant. And that's why they made the choice to go to Kyle Orton late in the year. 37 yards thus far in this game, second down and 10. Three wideouts. Orton clicks it out left side, intended for Chris James, incomplete. It'll be third and 10. And that's, a, that's on Kyle Orton. He's got to be more accurate. He's getting protection. He's got guys running open, and he's just got to find the range and zero in on those throws. Big, strong arm kid. I mean, he's a tall guy. He's six foot four, six foot five. He's got an interest in that Nebraska game. Yeah, he does. He's a big Nebraska fan, grew up a Nebraska fan. In fact, his uncle, Greg Orton, was a starting guard on the team that lost to Miami in the 84 Orange Bowl. So, big red fan all the way. Here comes a Max Blitz. Orton gets protection. Stubble field. It was just a little too far in front of him. Billy Newman defending number 10. See, the one thing right now that Kyle's doing is he's doing a nice job of staying in the pocket. I mean, he's not afraid to take a hit or stay in the pocket. He's just got to be kind of zero in the range finder right now. He's got to get that ball thrown it between the numbers of his guys. He's got guys open. His offensive line's given a little time. He's just got to find the right range. Travis Dorsch on the punt and does. Taken at the 18-yard line. And Eric Coleman immediately tackled at the 21. And let's check in with Andre Ware. Guys, uh, Washington State's defense, they're going to show Kyle Orton a lot of different looks. He's a young quarterback, like we mentioned earlier in the ball game. He's going to see some zone coverages on first and second down. He'll see some looks that look like blitz. They back out of it and then go to zone. Then they'll bring the full-scale blitz that you talked about, Todd, on third down. He's going to see a lot of different looks. He's going to have to stay mentally sharp all afternoon. Back up to you guys. And I think that they're going to have to do a good job throwing on first down, too, because I think Washington State is expecting run on first down they've played that five-man defensive line on most first down plays on first down Dave Minnick in the backfield Gesser rolls out after the fake and fires it toward air got rid of that one threw it away good pressure on the inside Craig Terrell with excellent pressure continue running down uh, some of the bowl games A&M over TCU people might have thought the old Southwest Conference days were back <laughs> That one was a surprise to me. Boston College beating Georgia. I thought Georgia would win that football game, but Boston College uh, really looked at that game as a chance to take a step forward in their program, uh, winning a game like that. Big win for Tom O'Brien's team. Second down and 10. Washington State up by 14. Here's Adele coming from the backside. Jerome Riley knew he was going to get popped, so he became a blocker. See, what happened on that play is that Purdue showed blitz. They came up and showed blitz and invited Jason Gesser to audible. And then when he did audible, they jumped out of it and played zone. And uh, so they, they baited him into an audible, and then Gesser didn't have anywhere really to go with the football. Gesser, 4 of 10 for the start. Honolulu, Hawaii, his high school team. He led them back-to-back -back seasons, 12-0. 24 and 0 at St. Louis High in Honolulu and said he belongs in Pullman. He was very entertaining talking about how much he loves playing at Washington State. Didn't enjoy that play. Battles at both end. Schweigert with the blitz and he got to Gesser's middle about the time he let it go. Yeah, nice coverage that time against the blitz. It's man to man. 
We talked about the pressure on Kyle Orton, but Purdue turning up the heat on Jason Gesser. Didn't quite handle the snap clean. The blitz by Schwagert. And a nice third down play by the Purdue Boilermakers. Alan Cox on to punt for the second time. Seth Morales, and they come for the block. Don't get there. Very close. Morales with a fair catch, grabs it at the 45. That's a 34-yard punt, nothing on the return. Nice defensive series by the Purdue Boilermakers. For complete college bowl game coverage, including Sun Bowl photo galleries, bowl capsules, and matchup analysis, go to cbs.sportsline.com or America Online, keyword CBS Sportsline. Wouldn't be surprised to see Purdue try to go deep down the field again, maybe into the seams, try to get Stanford the ball downfield. Here's Stanford. that five-man line again on first down. Orton rolls to his right, and finds a receiver across the 50 at the 46-yard line. That's Tim Stratton, his second catch of the game. Stratton with 47 receptions in the regular season this year. But uh, talked about missing Drew Brees. I mean, they had some combination going last yeah. year, and he said it's been a little different in 2001. It's tough for a senior. You know, you, you come off a junior year where you have such big numbers and, and the offense is clicking and everything's working, and then your senior year, you're breaking in new quarterbacks. That, that's tough. Second down and one. Montrell low across the 45. To the 44-yard line, James Price, number five, makes the tackle. Montrell Lowe on the carry. Montrell Lowe, another of those uh, 17 Texans who have migrated into Indiana, West Lafayette. He is from LaPorte, Texas, down near the Houston area. Engaging young fellow. Players are a little more relaxed in these uh, yeah. circumstances, aren't they, Todd? Yeah, it's a fun week for everybody. You know, there's still a game to be played, but they have a lot of fun, too. Horton across the middle, got it. Stratton, the tight end, his third catch, and he's tackled at the 38-yard line by Randall Smith, number 30. Stratton's a big guy, 253 pounds, the pressure up the middle, and Yet his receiver crossing his face. So Kyle Orton with his height, they able to see the tight end crossing right in front of him. As you see the all-time leading receiver past Rodney Carter this year, who I played with with the Steelers, was an excellent running back out of the backfield, out of Purdue. Second down, draw play, flag down. Washington State jumped off sides. Important drive right now for Kyle Orton and Purdue. Their defense got him a nice three and out, got him good field position off the punt. They've converted a couple first downs here. You see Kyle's numbers starting to improve a little bit. That one interception returned for a touchdown, but trailing 14 to nothing, a touchdown on this drive uh, gets him right back in the football game. Ball placed just inside the 34-yard line. And that's good enough for a first and 10. 14 zip. Jason David with a 45-yard interception return to open the scoring. And then Mike Bush caught a 46-yard pass from Jason Gesser to make it 14 zip. First and 10. Orton in the spread. Four down lineman for Washington State. Good protection this time. And there's Taylor Stubblefield open at the 30. Fumbles, but it goes out of bounds. Possession to be retained by Purdue. This is a nice read by Orton. Coverage downfield, dump it to your underneath guy, and Stubblefield just has to protect the football. James Price coming over there, hustling from his outside linebacker position to get a hand on it. And that brings up second down. Second down six, just inside the 30-yard line. 14-0. Stanford bottom of the screen. Orton looks for Stanford, finds him, slips a tackle. And then uh, second effort comes from the middle linebacker. 
at the 20 yard line. Let's go down to uh, Jill Arrington. Well, Vern, Purdue's senior offensive guard Sean Ruffalo suffered a stinger in his right shoulder a couple of series ago. They took him into the locker room. They put some padding and a brace on that shoulder to keep it into place. They're going to try to get him back in the game, but the offensive line is a spot Purdue cannot afford any injuries on. All right, thanks, Jill. And Tyler Moore in there now as his replacement at left guard. First down and 10. Here's Lowe. He's uh, hit immediately, manages to get a yard. Impressive drive. Yeah, and, and really the one thing that Purdue doing a very nice job of on this drive, and really for the most part the whole game, is protecting against the blitz. Washington State has come after Kyle Orton seven times already in the ball game. And they're doing a nice job of just stopping him at the point and giving him enough time to, to see something down the field. Of course, running the football some also takes a little sting out of that blitz. Officially a gain of two, second down and eight. Here's Orton. And again, a, a problem on the ground. Too many folks. Yep. They're, they're just too many defenders. Again, Washington State jumped into that five-man defensive line, anticipating run. They brought a couple linebackers up close and outnumbered them at the point of attack. Randall Smith, number 30, interesting background. His dad was a serviceman, married a, a young woman from Ireland. And they lived in London until Randall was uh, six years old. When his dad retired from the military, they moved to Gig Harbor, Washington, in part because that part of Washington reminded his mom of her native land. Snap, Orton comes left, intercepted, threw it right to the defensive back. It's Jason David again. Two in the first quarter. Well, again, there was pressure right up the middle. This time it was Randall Smith, who you just got done talking about, who got the pressure right up on the inside of Kyle Wharton. Watch number 30, right up the middle, and that affects a quarterback, believe me. Kyle Orton throws it early, a little miscommunication on the outside with his receiver on what the adjustment was gonna be, and he threw it right to Jason David. Obviously, he was expecting Staniford to hook up on that play against the Blitz, but Jason David comes up with his second interception of the day. Scored on the first, gets this one out to the 41-yard line and puts a period to an impressive drive. Here's Schweiger coming. The catch is made by Jerome Riley. There's a fumble wow. picked up, and here goes Purdue. What a play by Gesser. Landon Johnson picks it up with a counterpunch. I mean, this is excellent defense by Purdue. A huge hit, they rip the ball out. Joe Odom from the back is going to get a huge hit, and Brandon Johnson's trying to rip the ball up from the front. Watch the end of this play. Now, 65, Brandon Johnson, he's trying to rip the ball out. Watch Odom hit him in the back, and the ball pops out. But then Jason Gesser saves a touchdown. I mean, there's four guys there could have blocked Gesser, and nobody makes a block on Gesser. And Landon Johnson not able to get this one in the end zone. An excellent play by Purdue, but good hustle by Jason Gesser. And after the fumble return, first down at the 17-yard line. Here's Orton. Finds a man. Seth Morales inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. Diving catch made by Morales, the junior from Indianapolis. I'm impressed with this Purdue defense. I, I really am. I and mean, you know, this is an offense that has struggled all year, but a defense that has been really good. They're very fast, they're not very big, but they have made play after play all season long. That's the end of the first quarter with our score 14 nothing. We'll return to El Paso right after this message and a word from your local station. Late CSI, Golden Globe nominee. We welcome you back to the Sun Bowl in El Paso on a cloudy afternoon. 14 0 Washington State leading Purdue. They got the first touchdown on a 45 yard interception return, then a 46 yard pass, but Purdue now threatens after a fumble return of its own. Here's Orton into the flat left side. Taylor Stubblefield, the tackle is made almost immediately. 
at the eight yard line. Taylor Stubblefield with the, the tackle. Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge here at the Sun Bowl. We talked about turnovers yeah. at the uh, beginning of the broadcast. And look what's yeah, happening. Yeah, well, Purdue three turnovers. Washington State converts it into 14 points. Washington State's turned it over twice. So far, Purdue hasn't been able to convert, but they got a great opportunity now. Let's see what they can do on this second down play. Third down play. Third and one. Montrell Lowe got it. First and goal at the five yard line. Up, touchdown. Now, I think they might have called him down. I think you might have been right, Vern, because uh, I mean, credit Montrell Lowe for not quitting on the play and, and keep moving. He did a nice job to get the first down because Ryan Long had gotten penetration and I thought was going to make a play behind the line of scrimmage. And it will be brought back to the five. Yeah, see, Mon Ryan Long beats the penetration and gets the first down. Now, as he's spinning and fighting and going, they must have just called him down by momentum because I didn't see his knee hit the ground. The inadvertent whistle may have uh, made an appearance. Into the end zone! Standiford out of bounds short of the goal line. He's at the one half yard line. Really a nice play by Marcus Trufant. I mean, this is single coverage against a big receiver. John Standiford is 6'4, about 200 pounds. And watch Trufant keep him out of the end zone and not even allow him to get the ball across the plane. Standiford's going to try to reach the ball across the plane. He can't even do that. An excellent open field play by Marcus Trufant, the junior out of Tacoma, Washington. Second and goal. Montrell Lowe goes left. Did not get it. Trufant again. We saw him against the pass and now against the run. You know, one thing about Trufant, when I saw him on film against Washington, he was playing with a big club on his hand because he had had an injury, a broken bone on his hand, and he missed five games. But now with the layoff of the ball, he doesn't have a cast. He doesn't have any problems with either hand. And he is uh, playing at full strength and playing a nice ball game so far today. Third and goal. Jacob Rowe is the blocking back in front of Lowe. They hand it to Lowe. Touchdown, Purdue. They're on the board with the extra point to come. So points off yep, turnover. Able to capitalize. Defense got him a nice turnover. They keep pounding away with Montrell Lowe, and he does a nice job of finding a little seam in there and getting in the end zone. A nice job by Kyle Orton making a couple key throws. Dorch's extra point is up and good. 17 yards, it took them six plays. Lowe gets the touchdown from one yard out, 14-7. Ray Guy Award winner this year. Hunter and place kicker and a kickoff man. And this one taken back from the one yard line by Bill Newman. Tackle is made out at the 21 yard line. And it is time now for that much anticipated Aflac question of the week. Name the only person to be head coach at both Purdue and Washington State. This is a good one. The duck didn't travel to El Paso, by the way. Still, he's still tied to that. Hanging out in Atlanta that, somewhere. Yeah, he's tied to that blimp. <laughs> First down and ten. Toss right. Dave Minnick, not much there. Todd told you a little bit about Dave Minnick's story. He uh, went to high school in Stonington, Connecticut. Said uh, his grades weren't that great. Uh, Worked as a fry cook, parked cars at a casino in Connecticut, got married, had a son, and went to the Marine Corps for four years. And then uh, after he got out of the Marine Corps, went to Mount San Jacinto College, where Mike Anderson had gone. Almost went to Utah. Thought about that. That was the path Mike Anderson and the Broncos took to get into the NFL. This one was incomplete. And uh, Dave... Uh, Dave Minnick, his wife Kristen, his two sons are here, and along with 35 other people. Guesser looks like he got popped pretty good on that play. Yeah, favoring his left shoulder. 
Nico Kudavides, outside linebacker, came on the pressure. And again, this Purdue defense, they're, they're turning up the heat. They're coming after Jason Gesser. Six times they've been able to pressure the quarterback. We'll see what they do on this third and long situation. Third down, 11. 12.05 to go, first half. Blitz. Gesser gets rid of it, incomplete across the middle. Got some pressure. See, one of the differences between these two quarterbacks is Jason Gesser, even though he's more experienced, is, is significantly shorter than Kyle Orton. And pressure coming right in his face, he's not able to see the throwing lanes downfield as easily as a taller quarterback. That time, he tried to throw right in the direction that the blitz was coming from and couldn't see a good lane. Allen Cox on to punt for the third time. And he'll have the wind at his back. Seth Morales grabs it at the 35-yard line. Out of the first tackle, out of the second, and out of bounds. Good field position again for Purdue. Sure is. 44-yard punt, 10-yard return. Boilermakers with the ball down by seven. CBA Sports presentation of the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl is sponsored by Wells Fargo Bank, www.wellsfargo.com, The Home Depot, driving down the cost of home improvement, and by the Big Cheese, only at Sonic, America's drive-in. Welcome back to El Paso. Before this game is over, we'll be selecting the Army Most Valuable Player of the Game. That's coming up much later on. 11.46 to go first half. And here's Orton handing it off, play action rather, and he finds his tight end, Tim Stratton, number 89. And on the Washington State sideline, Matt Kegel, the sophomore quarterback from Haver, Montana, warming up. Mike Price uh, customarily brings him in for one series yeah. in the second half, or second quarter. Yeah, some coaches don't like to do that. He he likes to get him involved in the game early. Matt Kegel, a very talented athletic quarterback, is a cousin of Ryan Leaf, the former great Washington State quarterback. Second down, Purdue at the 45-yard line. They hand it off. Joey Harris, number 25, who spells Montreal low. Gets the carry. He's a sophomore from Tomball, Texas, another of those uh, 17 Texans who've gone in north to West Lafayette. Jill had reported on Sean Ruffalo. He's back in the game now at left guard. Obviously, the shoulder not a problem for him right now. Fifth year senior guy who's kind of waited his turn. You know, he never got to play till this year. He's not going to let a little, little shoulder stinger keep him out of the bowl game. First down and 10 from the 43-yard line. Hand off again. Harris, cutback play, gets to the 40, inside the 40, and uh, tackled at the 38-yard line. Well, the Boilermakers in the Big Ten. Great uh, football tradition. First Big Ten championship in 1929. They represented the Big Ten in the Rose Bowl last year. The best AP finish was fifth in 43. Bob Greasy, Leroy Keyes, Otis Armstrong, Hank Scram, Lenny Dawson, Rod Woodson, and Mike Allstop. That's a pretty good uh, group yep. of alums. Second and six. Here's Orton. Little pattern underneath, and he's got his tight end at the 30-yard line. Tim Stratton. That's his fifth catch. And one of the things Tim Stratton said when Purdue made the switch to Kyle Orton, things got a lot better for him because Hans was more of an athletic guy that was going to leave the pocket and run a little bit. Orton, the taller guy, who's going to stay in there and make the throw late. And uh, Tim Stratton has been the beneficiary of the last couple weeks of Kyle Orton's progress. Stanford and Morales break the huddle now and head to the left side. Motion in the line. Offsides. Now Joey he's Harris. Speed. He's, he's got, got some speed. He's got Orton in front. Here is Harris. The flag, I think, will be against Washington yeah. State. Yeah, it should be offsides against Washington State. And credit Joey Harris and the rest of the offense for not giving up on the play. I mean, it looked like the play was going to be stopped for no game behind the line of scrimmage. 
defense. Penalties declined. First down. Isaac Brown, number nine. There's the offsides. Now watch. Isaac Brown looks like he's going to make the play in the backfield. And Joey Harris able to break out of there and turn it into a huge game. See Kyle Wharton out in front trying to get a block. Wide receivers blocking downfield. Not very well. <laughs> he's young. He's a freshman. <laughs> get him on the sled for in the spring. Absolutely. <laughs> First and goal. Here's Harris. Inside the five to the four yard line. Nine to go. Mike Price. A little disturbed right now. He never gets terribly disturbed, though. The other thing important for Purdue here is to, is to capitalize on the great field position. Their average starting field position here has been their own 47-yard line. And so when you get that, you've got to really be able to take advantage of that. Your defense, your special teams doing their job. Offense needs to capitalize. A.T. Simpson has come in at a wide out. He's uh, split wide to the left side. Here's Orton looking right all the way now dances left pulls up and is tackled back near the original line of scrimmage that's going to bring up a third down Billy Newman number 10 good job you know talking to Orton yesterday we talked about him being the Nebraska fan and, and where his stock really went up he uh, he went to the Nike camp in Champaign Illinois had a great showing there went to Purdue's camp was at the Elite 11 camp out in California and Drew Brees was one of the counselors there. Time has been called by just under eight minutes to go before the halftime break Purdue with a chance now to tie this up and on third down Orton pressured knocked down back at the 11. Randall Smith number 30. Third down and four on the goal on the four yard line. Here's Randall Smith. Watch him come right inside. Shows that speed. Unblocked. And Kyle Orton did a smart thing there of just not giving up the football. Worst case scenario here, you bring your field goal team on and try to get three points. And so Travis Dorch is on the field. 20 of 25 this year. Ben Smith is the holder. The kick is up. And it is good. So Purdue gets three. They wanted seven, but uh, they are back in the thick of this. 14 10, Washington State. Wells Fargo Sun Bowl in El Paso, 724 to go before the break. Washington State, 14 10. Here's Dortch with the kickoff, and Eric Coleman will grab this one from the one yard line. Coleman spilled as he gets to the 25 yard line. Well, it's time now for the answer to the Affleck. trivia question. Name the only person to be head coach at both Purdue and Washington State. I, you got to be a real aficionado of both these schools to get this one. William Lone Star Dietz. He actually got Washington State into uh, the Rose Bowl, where they uh, defeated Brown 14-0 in 1917, and then a 1-6 and record at Purdue. Looks like he might have been a bit of a personality. Yeah, looks like it. Nice coaching gear. Rose Bowl in 15. Here's Kegel on at quarterback. And uh, the yards are coming very yeah. difficult for Dave Minnick today. Well, you know, Washington State, even though they have the lead right now, offensively, they're struggling. Only two first downs. Their last three possessions, three and out, a fumble, and a three and out. So, and now with a new quarterback, uh, a little pressure on Matt Kegel. Gain of two, second down, and eight. 14-10, Washington State. Cougars coming off a 9-2 season. The only losses to Oregon. And uh, the final regular season game at Washington. Here's quarterback draw. Kegel keeps it. And uh, that'll bring up a third down from the 30-yard line. Kegel at 6'5", 230 pounds from Haver, Montana. One guy we might see him try to get the ball to here, Nakoa McElrath, the leading receiver coming in with 67 catches. Very quiet today, no catches. He's down at the bottom of the screen right here is McElrath, their leading receiver. 
did not start today game today's game he uh, was in the doghouse with the coaches for some critical comments he made that one's going to be incomplete as Kegel is popped Landon Johnson got there and Derek Roche is very slow getting up number 77 well, I tell you, you just can't say enough about this Purdue defense. They carried this team all year. Landon Johnson, who we saw had the fumble recovery early, that time gets to the quarterback, but it's a, a defense that over the last five years under Joe Tiller has been made faster and faster. Bad snap, they come after Cox and miss him. And Cox on the run. Low snap, they had a chance for the tackle. And Allen Cox. Runs 19 yards for a first down. Boy, showed some nice speed. This is a bad snap. Low and wobbly, and Cox does a smart thing. He doesn't think he can get it off. And then shows some ability to run with the football and protects it at the end. So a very heads-up play by Alan Cox. Doug Swan, number 59 of Purdue, was the man who had a chance and missed the tackle. And a first down at the 50. And Gesser back in the ball game. Right. Take advantage of that play and this field position. Here comes the blitz. Throws it deep. That's going to be a flag. Yeah. Two flags. Woodyard was beat and just instinctively reached back and grabbed Mike Bush. The ball was underthrown, and so Bush had to stop and wait for it, but Woodyard was beaten. Watch, Bush is behind Woodyard and he just reaches back and grabs him with the left hand. He does get the right hand to deflect it, but the left hand is what got him in trouble. On the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Boy, what a turnaround. Sure I mean, was. You know, your defense has a great series, forced the punt, bad snap, and the punter turns it into a big play and now Washington State with a first down on the 35 yard line of Purdue. That's Brock Spack the defensive coordinator of Purdue his team doing their job. But now with their backs against the wall a little bit. How could you be anything but a defensive coordinator with the name <laughs> Brock Spack. There's a handoff. Dave Minnick inside the 30 to the 29. He was a a linebacker at Purdue, an all Big Ten linebacker, graduated in 1984. His fifth year as the defensive coordinator here with Joe Tiller. Spent some time with him out in Wyoming as well. So these two have been together a lot, and their philosophy was let's put our fastest guys on defense. And that's what they started building here at Purdue five years ago. And right now, this is a very fast defensive football team. Second down, four. Cougars lead by four. There's a little flip left side incomplete. It'll be third down. That was intended for McElrath. Well, coming up at the halftime report, we'll uh, revisit a touching story involving Brad Gaines. We'll also have moments of the year. Purdue's All-American Band and the Cougar Marching Band, both here in El Paso. And they will be performing for you at halftime. Big play right here. Purdue's defense had to come back on the field. They've got him in a third down situation. A stop here could be huge for the Boilermakers. Gesser with the audible. He's got four wide outs. Here comes the blitz. And Gesser has to hurry it. Incomplete. A lot of safety blitzes by Purdue. They're covering up the inside lineman and then dropping them out. But watch this. They cover these guys up and then bring the safeties and drop a lineman out. So they're really not selling the farm, but they're bringing safeties in spots that there's nobody there to block them. And Brady Doe, the backup strong safety, is the first guy to get to Gesser. Drew Dunning, his longest of the year is 49 yards. This will be 47. He's got the breeze at his back. Nailed it. Well done for Drew Dunning. He's now 15 of 19 for the season, and they saw a reason he's a first-team All-Pac-10 pick. This is a message from lead on Marinovich's pass to Gary Wellman. The Spartans a 14-10 lead on Courtney Hawkins 
21 yard TD reception. And then Michigan State kicker John Langlow, a 52 yard field goal in the third quarter, put the Spartans up 17 10. They held on to win it by one at a rematch of the 1988 Rose Bowl that uh, had been captured by Michigan State. 4.17 to go before the break here. The Cougars from Pullman, Washington, leading the Boilermakers out of West Lafayette by seven. And Adam Holliday, they call him Doc, as you might expect, getting ready to kick off. Touchback. Thursday on Survivor, with only two episodes left, the stakes are higher than ever. Who will make it to the final four? Find out on an all new Survivor Africa Thursday on CBS. Real important right now for Kyle Orton not to make a big mistake here. His team has fought and clawed their way back into the game. They're down by seven. Because Washington State is still going to come after him. They're not going to change what they've been doing, they've been successful enough. There's the handoff. Low, number three. Montrell low. Montrell low. Nothing doing. Okay, it'll be second down. No gain on the play. Second down and no ten. Gain. This is so interesting to me to watch these two teams because they are so similar on both sides of the ball. I mean, we talked about the speed of the Purdue defense. This is a very fast Washington State defense as well. Not an overly big defense, but they've got people that can run at every position. Well, that in part due to the relationship between the respective coaches, Joe Tiller and Mike Price, and the relationships on the staff. They're just it's like a spider web. Here's Stratton with his sixth catch out to the 26-yard line. Well, and one of the things, too, when you play this kind of offense and you have to practice against it, you try to defend this defense, you can't do it with slow people. When you're playing an offense, or offenses that spread the field and use three and four wide receivers, you've got to have speed on the field defensively. And so that's where a lot of teams have gone and moved to defensively, these two teams as well. Third and four. Three down linemen now for Washington State. But they look like they're going to break the house. They bring a bunch. Nice. Sure was. The catch is made at the 32 by Stratton. Yeah, that's uh, that's strength on strength. I mean, Tim, Tim Stratton, an All-American type player, Lamont Thompson, an All-American free safety. The pressure is going to come from the outside, and Orton sees it, reads it, and makes the quick, short throw to his tight end, Stratton. Seven catches, first half for Tim Stratton. Play fake. Orton looks deep, fires it deep. He's got Stubblefield. Taylor Stubblefield in a foot race caught from behind and down at the three and a half yard line eric coleman caught him a 65 yard game well they've thrown short they've thrown short they haven't tried to attack deep and this time they go right down the seam Stubble field on the quick post and you saw the slip by eric coleman and that is all that stubble field needed to get behind him and give Kyle Orton a nice target. A, light, a slight slip by Eric Coleman and Stubblefield ran by him. First and goal, nearing two minutes to go in the first half. Morales goes wide left, Stubblefield and Standiford stack up bottom of the screen and time called. Now play clock was down to one. Smart decision by Kyle Orton. That is the second Purdue timeout taken. They've got one left. The biggest thing that I've seen from Kyle Orton here in the latter part of the first half, we talked about him having to find the range with his accuracy. He's found it. He's now hit his last nine passes, the ball going right where he wants it to. Billy Newman, the victim on the defense, but Kyle Orton has found his range. Now stubble field from Yakima, Washington. Told you earlier he thought about going to Washington State. Told him he would, then changed his mind. Makes the pay. Purdue has tied it up. 17 all. 
It's a little cold here in El Paso. Guys trying to keep warm. 42 degrees at kickoff, and Taylor Stubblefield doesn't feel the chill at all. Here's the kick. Dortch, it's taken by Newman at the five yard line. Bill Newman struggles, can't quite shake the tackle, which is made at the 15 yard line. Let's go back to the two big connections, Orton to Stubblefield. Here's Stubblefield. He's going to run the post pattern, and there's no safety help. The middle of the field is going to open up. Orton's going to see that, and then he sees Stubblefield get some separation. That takes him all the way down to the three, and then they got a great matchup on the touchdown. Stubblefield against the strong safety, Billy Newman, and he ran a little zigzag route and got separation again. So nice combinations between the two freshmen. First down at the 15 with 148 to go. Gesser being chased, hit as he lets it go. He's got Bush open, but uh, can't hook up with him. Bush was backing up over Antoine Rogers, number 12. Washington State coaches told us they were going to go after Rogers. I mean, he was the corner that they were going to attack. He's a red shirt freshman. He's 170 pounds, and they felt with their big receivers, Bush and McElrath, that they'd have a chance to make some plays. Bush caught one touchdown over Rodgers earlier in the ball game. And he heads out wide right against Rodgers again on second down. Gesser, here comes the blitz. There goes the hit. And that one is incomplete. That floated up near the 45-yard line. Well, the problem for Washington State right now and Jason Gesser is they want to throw the ball down the field, but I don't think he has enough time to throw it downfield. Purdue is able to get to him. Twelve pressures they've been able to exert on Jason Gesser here in the first half. As you look at his numbers, five of 18, you say, wow, he's not throwing it very well. Well, he's not having a whole lot of time to throw it. You know, I think back to how we began the day talking about the difference in the two quarterbacks. We both felt that the edge would be Washington State's there's pressure again as Gesser is popped now that may call for a flag no nope. as long as he didn't make contact there's no such thing as face guarding in college football and that's what you could have thought that Antoine Rogers was doing he was beat and trying to catch up Landon Johnson gets the pressure on the quarterback now watch Rogers doesn't know where the football is but as long as he doesn't make contact he doesn't. The ball was there first, then Rodgers came in. Good no call by the officials. Well, how about this turnaround? Three and out now for Washington State and Purdue with one timeout left. Has a chance for pretty good field position here. Cox with the punt, taken by Morales at the 39. Breaks out of a tackle there at the 48-yard line. Great field position the entire first half for Purdue. 41-yard punt, 10 on the return. Now, triple header women's basketball next Saturday on CBS. We'll begin with Penn at Vanderbilt, then Georgia at Michigan State, and a much-anticipated matchup, UConn visiting Tennessee, as they seem to do all the time. That's a heck of a game. That's next Saturday. I think Kyle Orton can feel free to take a few chances on this drive. Here's Orton across the middle. Incomplete, knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. You know, the last drive, I said it was it was important for him not to make a mistake because they were trailing by seven and they had gotten themselves back in the ball game. Now with the game tied with a minute 12 left, obviously you don't want to do something that's not smart, but uh, if you think you can stick one in there down the field, now's a good time. The game is tied and you guys are, are starting to seize the momentum in the football game a little bit. Second down and 10. Comes right for Morales. It's low down around the ankles. Jason David was there defending. And, uh, let's check in with Andre Ware. Yeah, guys, both teams are still applying a lot of pressure. The difference has been Purdue has gone to the shotgun with Kyle Orton, allowing him a little bit more time to get the football off. Jason Gesser is still under the center. He's having to drop back. It's taking him a little more time to read defenses and get the ball down downfield, get it out downfield. That's back a, up to you guys. That's a really good point Andre makes because of the under the center and coming in those inside gaps uh, that's just hard for a quarterback to separate from the line of scrimmage enough. Here's third down. Orton comes right. Got him in. Catch is made for the first down at the 38-yard line. 
Seth Morales. On the cap. One-on-one -on -one coverage, Jason David. Nice cut by Morales and a perfect throw right on the edge by Kyle Orton. Gain of 13 and a first down with 1.03 to go before the break. Orton now 17 of 26. Blitz, Orton, dropped. Flag is down. Might have offside against Washington State. You see, it, it's interesting to see, and the point again that Andre brought up about the shotgun, when Kyle Orton takes the snap, he's not dropping back. I mean, he's only taking one step back, but because he's already six yards off the line of scrimmage, it enables him to see the throwing lane and stay in there and make the throw. Take a look now. The offsides is going to come from the top. There's Isaac Brown, but watch Orton. He doesn't drop back, but he's already separated enough so he can still make the throw even though there's pressure coming. After the penalty, first and five. Blitz coming again. Good protection. Incomplete. Plus, I'll tell you the other difference between Purdue and Washington State right now is the shotgun, and also Purdue is doing a better job of sealing off the inside. There's no inside pressure coming right into the face of Kyle Orton like Purdue's able to get on Jason Gesser. If, if pressure's coming from Washington State, it's coming outside, and it's not getting there quick enough to, to, to make an effect. Second and five. Purdue with one timeout left. Four-man rush. No pressure at all. He's got deep. And it's nice tipped play. away. Billy nice Newman. play. Billy Newman with an excellent play. He got beat on the touchdown the last possession, but he did a nice job of getting a hand on the football. He's a fifth-year senior, Billy Newman, a great leader. He's undersized, he's under speed, and he's an overachiever. That's the way Mike Price described him and has been an excellent leader for this football team. Coach on the field, makes all the defensive calls, gets people in the right spot all the time. And he and his teammates confront a Purdue bunch that has a third and five. Orton, pressure, blitz coming, pass incomplete. Fourth down. Intended for Seth Morales. That time they were able to get inside pressure on Kyle Orton. Ryan Long, the defensive tackle, able to get in there into the face of Kyle Orton and force a low throw. Well, Travis Dorch is the Ray Guy Award winner and was a finalist for the Lou Groza Award. He's got uh, a 50-yard effort now, 51 officially for Dorch. His long of the season is 50. Boy, he nailed that. Whoa! <laughs> That's into the wind. That thing got up in a hurry, too. I mean, that was a high kick with lots of distance. 6'6", senior from Bozeman, Montana, 51 yards. All around the world, Siemens is helping people work together, even when they're not together. From next generation internet to mobile business solutions, we're giving people the freedom to communicate better. Spin, spin, spin the globe. It's your turn to spin the globe. Farmers insurance to get things back to the way they were. Farmers insurance gets you back where you belong. An elephant disrupts the survivor camp. And don't miss the super immunity challenge. Two episodes to go. All new Survivor CBS Thursday. 51 yard field goal for Travis Dorch. And he will now kick off. 
Coleman drifts back and takes it a yard in. He'll bring it out. He will bring it out to the 23 yard line. Nice return. Travis Dorch, notice he's got uh, NYPD on one arm and the FDNY on the other. Nice young man out of Bozeman, Montana. He's had a terrific year as both a uh, putter and a place kicker. And that's uh, Detective Kenneth Pepe from the New York Police Department, Woody McHale. Fire Marshal now in Manhattan. Two wonderful guys who were friends before they came down here. They played against each other yeah. in the Fireman uh, Police Department Amateur Football League. So they knew each other before the tragedy. And they have enjoyed themselves here in El Paso to an enormous degree and brought a lot of uh, emotional moments with them for people who had a chance to spend time with them. Backfield Minnick for a bunch. Nice play. Sometimes you get in a situation like this and you, you call a screen on a first down play. And if it turns into be a big play, you know, you, you go ahead and, and change your strategy a little bit. Well designed screen. You see the convoy out there for Minnick. Joey Hollenbeck leading the way. Nicoa McElrath, who got hit at the end of that play, is still down. Looks to be okay, but he kind of got caught in the middle of the action right there at the end of the play. Purdue did call, uh, or rather, Washington State called timeout. Nicola trying to figure out what the license plate was of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> it was Dave Minnick. Uh, McElrath a little woozy as he uh, heads to the sideline. See, he's, he's got something in his eye or something bothering him right there, and then Dave Minnick hits him from the front, and then a Purdue player hits him from behind, so he uh, he got beat up pretty good on that play. And I'm a wide out. I'm not supposed to be in there doing that. I'm not supposed to be out there catching passes, doing dances, and that kind of stuff. In there banging me around like that. McElrath, the senior out of La Jolla, California. He'll sit this play out. Bush goes wide right. Scott Lund has come in as a wide receiver as well, number 22. Here comes the blitz. Gesser steps up. Hit and dropped at the 41-yard line. Speed. Aiken Adele. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're, they're in the shotgun this time, and yet Gesser's still not able to get anything going. A little twist move, and Adele with the pressure. Time called by the Cougars. It's been said, men tend to communicate shoulder to shoulder. If that's the case, these guys are saying, let's change the world. Let's make a difference. Let's act as we are called. The Knights of Columbus, in service to one, in service to all. 12 seconds away from the break. Washington State trailing now, having uh, jumped out to a 14-0 lead. Purdue came back and tied it up ultimately at 17-all, and then the 51-yard field goal by Travis Dorsch has given Purdue a three-point edge. Second and 15. No problem with the personnel. Yeah, you wouldn't expect that, too, coming out of a timeout, but... Uh... A little confusion. They're bringing in Jeremy Theobar, the backup tight end now, and take a receiver out. Here's Gesser. Here comes the blitz. The pressure again, enormous. And the ball is intercepted. Well, that, that was like a punt. I mean, Jason Gesser just, he just reared back and threw it almost straight up in the air, hoping that uh, it would go far enough against the blitz. But it's the pressure, the pressure that Purdue has been able to generate is frustrated Jason Gesser. Now watch, these receivers are going down the field, and Gesser's just going to launch it and see if one of them can come down with it, almost like a Hail Mary throw, but it hung up in the air so long 
that the interception was able to be made by Purdue coming all the way across the field. Jacques Reeves, number 28, another of the Texas connection. He's from Lancaster, Texas. And his second interception of the season. Final play of the first half. Led by its defense, Purdue has roared back and taken a three-point halftime lead. Kyle Orton, the freshman quarterback, had a pretty decent first half as well. 2017, and they trail at one point by 14 in the first quarter. Let's go down to Jill Arrington, who is with Joe Tiller. Coach Tiller, your team was down 14 nothing early in the first quarter. It could have gotten ugly, but you fought back. Now you've taken the league. What does it say about the character of this team today? Well, we'll find out when the game's all over, but it's great to be able to come back like this. I think our guys are, are into the game emotionally, which really helps us, certainly. But it always helps when that quarterback performs well, and he's doing that right now. Your defense is playing exceptional, but you said the offense. They're really getting into their rhythm. What can we expect to see in the second half? I hope more of the same. We would like to continue to throw the football and run it, and, 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 and we've been good with our snap count. I think that's one of the things that's been impressive about him. That we got him to jump off sides a number of times. All right, Coach. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jill. CBS Sports coverage of the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl will continue from El Paso after this message and a word from your local station. I know the rest. Best actor. See for yourself why The Guardian is the season's highest rated new drama. The Guardian, Tuesday on CBS. Welcome back to the College Football Report. I'm Jill Arrington. Well, by now, you've opened all of your gifts, perhaps returned a few, too, but before the new year rolls in, it's never too late for one final stocking stuffer. So I'll say goodbye for now, and let's take a look back at the greatest moments of the college football season. You're unbelievable. First down and 10 to go. Here's a hand up to Thunder who gives it back to Mike Stokes. He's going to throw it. He's got a man out. Yes! The 40. It is. Mike Crouch. 15, 10, 5, St. Pierre back. Throws the slant incomplete. Oh! Picked off. It is picked off by Miami. It went off the shoe tops of Ryan Reed and into the clear on the return. Edward Reed going down the sidelines, middle of the field to the 20, to the 10.
Sport Fishing Expo. It's Chicagoland's biggest and best all fishing show. January 4th through the 6th, the Arlington International Racecourse will come alive with the world's biggest fishing stars, including Babe Winkleman and Ron Lindner. Save big money on tackle and boats. Book trips with guides and lodges from across North America. January 4th through 6th at the Arlington International Racecourse in Arlington Heights. Catch the big one, the new Arlington Sport Fishing Expo. Lights in town, that's where the special times are found. Oh, I like it, Red. This holiday at Blockbuster, enjoy some special times with these hot new releases Evolution, Moulin Rouge, and Scary Movie 2. Rent them tonight on DVD or VHS. Now that's a wrap, Shadow. Let's go. Listen to what everyone's saying about the CBS2 Problem Solver. I'm grateful to Channel 2 for covering this for me. We're on your side. Channel 2 called me, and they're here. I'm totally amazed at the action when I call Channel 2. And we get things done fast. Even public officials agree. Nice to know that we have a partner with Problem Solver. Channel 2 was very helpful in resolving the problem. Find out what you're missing. Problem Solvers, they're the best. The Problem Solver, weeknights at 5 and 10 on CBS2. Mike Adam Lee on CBS 2. Twenty seventeen Purdue with the lead, having fallen behind by fourteen to nothing. We get set for the start of the second half of the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl. Here's Holiday with a kick, and again nails it, and Purdue will take over first and ten at the 20-yard line. And a moment ago, Andre Ware spoke with Washington State coach Mike Price. Coach, you guys came out like gangbusters in the first quarter. A big interception for a touchdown and a long touchdown pass to Mike Bush. But then the blitz has started. What can we, what you, uh, what kind of adjustments? What kind of adjustments have? What kind of adjustments have? Listen like crazy and so are they. Well, it's nothing really big. They're executing just the quick outs and little flat passes, and, and we're not. And, uh, we can bring it in and protect, you know, seven, or we can spread them out and, and throw hot. I thought, Joe, I thought Joe was supposed to be your friend. He's not supposed to blitz you this much, is he? Well, he's blitzing like crazy, <laughs> isn't he? But we just need to execute just the short passing game against the blitz and protect just a little bit better, and we'll be fine. Great, great. Thanks, Coach. Thanks a lot. Back up to you guys. All right, and there is Joe Tiller, friendship that began in 1974 when they were both on the staff under Jim Sweeney at Washington State. And... Uh, Joe Tiller later went back and worked under Mike Price, 79 and 80. Their wives are good friends. It's a nice relationship between yeah. the two. Well, just because you're friends doesn't mean that you don't compete as hard as you can. <laughs> and the pass is intercepted. Orton has been picked off for the third time. This is Lamont Thompson's ninth interception of the season. And his 23rd in his career, which is the Pac-10 record. He's a free safety, but he's got great speed and size, and he's out there on a wide receiver and steps right in front of the throw intended for Stubblefield. An excellent play by the All-American Lamont Thompson. Four Purdue turnovers, three of them have been picks. And after that interception, it's first down at the 28-yard line. Here comes Jason Gesser who uh, was blitzed early and often. Quick flip out, left side, caught by Riley. Riley's got some room. And he is tackled inside the 20 at the 18-yard line as we get underway here in the third quarter of play. Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge. And uh, there's turnovers really have been uh, turnovers and defensive pressures. Of yeah, the pressures. I mean, the teams and Mike Price was exactly right. They're playing the same way. Both defenses are going after the quarterback. The difference in the first half, particularly in the second quarter, Purdue's quarterback, Kyle Orton, was able to handle the pressure, make plays. Jason Gesser was not able to. And we saw right away what Mike Price was talking about strategy-wise. Quicker throws to defeat the blitz. Here's a quick setup, and the pass almost picked off. That one almost went the other way. Deontay Farrell had unimpeded territory had he been able to hold on. And again, Jason Gesser picking himself off, off the Sun Bowl Stadium turf at the end of that play. This is a little quick throw to McElrath, trying to get him involved in the game. It's a long throw from the left hash to that side of the field. 
and Farrell almost comes down with the interception. But McElrath, very, very quiet in this football game. Second down and 10. And the quick set up. That one tipped away again. It's Farrell, who got a hand up in front of McElrath. Yeah, and Jason Gesser does not look confident to me right now. He kind of double-clutched on that one. He, he didn't just plant his foot and make the throw. And you see what they've been able to do to him. Only one sack, but a lot of times in his face, hurrying him. And that time, he just kind of hesitantly tried to throw that one in there to McElrath. He's not in a rhythm right now the way that Kyle Orton was in a rhythm. In the red zone this season, 30 touchdowns, 11 field goals, third and 10, blitz coming, deep in the corner, McElrath is there, and can't make the catch. Well, they had what they wanted. They had the matchup. Their top receiver, McElrath, against the strong safety, Deontay Farrell. This favors the wide receiver, and he runs right by Farrell. It's not even close, but Gesser just a little too far on the football. And again, he is just not as sharp right now as I've seen him earlier in the year. Drew Dunning will try for the tie from 34 yards out. And he has done it. Second field goal of the game for Drew Dunning. And the interception leads to three. We're tied at 20. Three to go in the third. Washington State with an early score to tie it up. Notched at 20, and uh, WSU getting ready to kick off. Here's Holiday. This one chases Stubblefield back and goes through the end zone. It'll be a touchback again for Adam. Not Holiday. Now coming up Sunday, doubleheader for you. The NFL on CBS, five games early. Many of you will see Jacksonville at Chicago. And then three games late, the Jets go into Oakland. Buffalo will be at Miami and Kansas City at Seattle. And it all begins with the NFL today. Jim Nance, the group, Sunday at 12 noon Eastern time. Kyle Orton. True freshman from Altoona, Iowa. 18 to 31. Three interceptions. And off to Montrell Lowe. Gets a yard. Ryan Long, number 88, with the tackle. Let's go back and uh, check the halftime stats, Todd. Well, in a lot of ways, even when you look at turnovers, but total yards, that's the one. 139 yards for Washington State. This is a team that coming in was averaging nearly 440 yards a game, one of the top offenses in the Pac-10 conference. So much credit to the Purdue defense in that first half, slowing down this Cougar offense. Second and nine, Purdue. At the 21. Cougars brings four. Good pressure. That forces Orton to run. And Randall Smith, number 30, makes the tackle at the 26-yard line. He's having a nice football game, Randall Smith. He's uh, a guy that the coaches say is, is a very draftable guy, probably be drafted on the first day. 40-inch vertical jump, 4-4 speed. The guy who's just gotten better and better through his time at Washington State. When he was a senior in high school, he was only 16 years old, and so he's a young guy that developed, and he's a fifth-year senior now who is uh, going to be playing on Sundays next year. Third and four. Stunts defensively. Orton pumps once. Plants it out to the left side and finds John Standerford. That'll be good for a first down. Great protection. I mean, th this what caused this, because this play took a long time to develop. The pump fake was trying to get somebody to bite to throw it deep. But watch these guys up here and the protection that Orton gets. Only a four-man rush, so it's five on four. He's able to pump fake, reload, and then dump it to his second receiver. He was trying to go to stubble field first down the middle of the field. That was covered, and Stanford was his outlet. From the 33, first and 10. This time under center. And off to low, coming right, looks for blocking help. Good defensive play instead. Marcus Trapont came up to help with Eric Coleman's tackle. Nice stuff. Uh, defensive play from the secondary guys. And tough to run sideways on either one of these defenses. Again, they're both built for speed, not overly big, linebackers that can run, defensive ends that can run, and obviously secondary people that can cover the ground in a hurry as well. They both get to the football so well. Second down and eight. Five 
man line again for Washington State. Purdue needs to throw here. And the blitz as well. And the quick flip out to the right side for Stratton. And a flag oh thrown God. way downfield. I mean, the official who threw the flag was a good 30 yards away. That's the back judge. Defensive holding. Well, it was Billy Newman defending on the tight end Stratton, and it looked like there could have been some holding, but my goodness. <laughs> on the defense, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Thomas had lazy surgery. <laughs> well, drank some carrot juice this morning, you know? <laughs> one or the other. Good eyes from a long, long ways away. Tom Compton made the call. Mike Price wearing the cap of the Fire Department of New York. He's got uh, the Fire Marshal Woody McHale on the sidelines with him. First and 10 at the 45. 2020, speaking of vision. That's a reach. <laughs> Hand off low. Nice run across the 50 to the 49-yard line. At the gain of six, James Price with the tackle. Again, we talked about that height, whether it's real height or program height, but he's short, and he's stocky and well-built, and he's able to kind of just hide in behind there and squat down and find little creases and, and bounce in there for nice gains, just like that. That's a nice run on first down. Not a lot of numbers here today, but enough to, to keep some of the pressure off of Kyle Orton. Twice this season, he has been over 100 yards. And 14 for 24 today. Out of the spread again on second down. Orton finds, oh, dropped by Standiford. Right in the pause. Again, the, the pressure coming, and the only guy that can come free is on the way outside. So Orton able to stand in there and make the throw, and that time, Standiford just a little anxious to start running before he catch the football. Produced 7 of 13 on third downs now. Third and four for Kyle Orton and the Boilermakers. And they are at the 49 of Washington State. There comes the pressure. Across the middle, there's the tight end and that is the first down. They've really been effective with this. You know, on, on the third down and five, third down and four, just a little easy throw to the tight end. He's bigger than the strong safety, Billy Newman, that's covering him. He's a nice big target, and he's crossing right over the face, or right in front of the face, of the quarterback, Kyle Orton. It's an easy read and an easy throw for the young quarterback. Eight catches now for 52 yards for Tim Stratton, and a first down and 10 at the 44-yard line. A.T. Simpson again in the ball game, wide to the left. Here's Lowe, tries to break into the secondary and gets to the 40. Now, Tim Stratton, we talked about him being the all-time leading receiver at Purdue, and uh, he's number five on the Big Ten list. When we asked uh, Jim Chaney, the offensive coordinator, what makes him so special? What, what stands out about him? He says he has great hands. has the best hands of anybody on the team, and he just knows how to get open. He finds a way to get open, and we've certainly seen that here in the ballgame today. Here's a play fake. Orton coming to his right. Gets a good block, but then the pressure got to him, and he's tackled back at the 43-yard line. I'm not so sure that Kelly Butler, his right tackle, didn't hit him harder than anybody from Washington State. <laughs> the scramble, and Butler was coming back to try to help out and peel a guy off, and uh, he got involved in the tackle, too. It's Kelly Butler, a very talented athlete, 6'8", 299 pounds, redshirt freshman out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Again, one of those new youngsters on the offensive line that's kind of growing into the position each week. Third and nine. Three man in front, and five are coming, and there is Orton hit from behind. That's an incomplete pass, and he was belted by Billy Newman on the blitz. Yeah, one of the few times that Kyle Orton didn't know where the pressure was coming from. It's going to come from his backside, and he has no idea it's coming. He thinks he's protected. He thinks he's okay. Has no idea that Billy Newman is bearing down on him. So a nice job by the Washington State defense. Coming up with the big third down play. And their sky punter, the short punter, Scott Kurz, is in for the second time today. 
They call him the sky cutter, and uh, there are a couple of flags thrown. We're going to have the uh, interference, I think. Yeah. Well, there was no fair catch signal by Coleman, but still a violation of the halo for the protective area there for the return man. appropriate that the uh, conference USA <laughs> officials would have a conference. Tim Upshur was the guy that was down there in the wrong area, number 48. Looked like he was trying to catch the punt. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to do that. I want it. First yep. down, Washington State. If you needed money to make money, how soon could you get it? This presentation of the Wells Fargo Sunbow is sponsored by Wells Fargo Bank, www.wellsfargo.com. Knights of Columbus, in service to one, in service to all. And by Aflac. Ask about it at work. Tied 20-20 in the third quarter from the Sun Bowl in El Paso. And again, the pressure on Gesser. He throws it a little too high and had Bush wide open. Not good sight lines down the field for Jason Gesser. Again, he's listed at 6-1. Maybe he's that. But when that pressure comes inside and gets up in his face, it's hard for him to see those seams down the middle of the defense. And it's hard to step into the throw as well. 7 of 26 now for the game. And it looks like the Boilermakers are going to come with uh, a bunch again. Now they back out. Four down. Quick off the block is Adel, and Gesser moving, firing incomplete. He really is uneasy yeah. back there. Well, and they did the same thing to him that time. They baited him into the audible, and then they jumped out and played zone. So he checks to a play to beat man-to-man -man blitz, and they play zone, and he ends up having to throw it away. Cougars trying to become a 10-win team for only the third time in the history of the school. They accomplished it when they went to the Rose Bowl under Mike Price back in 1997. They also accomplished it in 1929. They come in 9-2, and two, and they look at a third and 10 here. Out of the gun, here comes the blitz, Gesser, and that should throw, there's the flag. Yep. Landon Johnson was great from the back to the intended receiver. Yeah, contact too early. The right hand was over the back of the intended receiver, Theobar. Take a look, here it is right there, Landon Johnson. The right hand is wrapped around the receiver. And Jason Gesser, I mean, he'll take a, a conversion any way he can get it now. They were one for nine on third down before that play. And coming into the game, they were the second best team in the Pac-10 on third downs, con converting 41%. So. It's hard to stay on the field and generate much offense if you can't convert on third down. Only one sack, but the pressures and the hurries are significant. Here's the pass, right side, caught. And out of bounds at the 35-yard line. That's Nicola McElrath, and that is his first catch today. And Nicola didn't get the start today. Uh, it was a little... Uh, critical of the play calling in the Washington game and uh, you know Mike Price lets his guys speak to the media gives them a lot of freedom but when they cross the line uh, there's a price to be paid and his price today was to not start he's been in the game a lot but that's the first time that he's been able to get his hands on the football Ooh, Price says he's got a price to pay <laughs> second down hand on John Tippins number 25 on a relief of Dave Minnick and uh, tackled at the 39-yard line. Well, it might be a good time to try to throw a screen again to wa for Washington State. They've had some success running the screens against this pressure defense. Matt Kegel signals a play in, having uh, gotten the desire from Mike Price, the, the play selection. Third down and two. 20-20 ball game. Minnick, nothing doing. 
Uh, excellent job by the Purdue defense. Craig Carroll, number 92, is the guy who just stuffs it. I mean, he does not move an inch. And that forces Minnick to bounce it outside. Watch Carroll right over here, number 92, just sit in here and hold his ground. And he forces Minnick to bounce it outside. And then the rest of the black shirts are there. Allen Cox on the front. And Seth Morales awaits it. Nice and deep. Morales chased all the way back. Let's it go over his head into the end zone. And that's a 62-yard punt, resulting in a touchback. 20-20. We play with 6.49 to go in the third from El Paso. The Cougar football team, I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. Go, go Cougs. That don't sound right. <laughs> 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 Oh, goodness. Meanwhile, we're, we're back to play. Here's a handoff in big trouble. Joey Harris, number 25. This guy's in, in deep trouble. <laughs> Going through some real transformations right there. <laughs> yeah, but he'll rise above it. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> Loss of six, second down and six. Rowdy Boilermakers. <laughs> second and 16, 2020 ball game. 6-10 to go, third quarter. And Orton again working out of the shotgun just as beat the play clock. Here comes Randall Smith. And Orton just dumped it, and it was almost intercepted. Well, I don't know if Lamont Thompson... Uh, knew exactly where the ball was. I mean, because the career Pac-10 interception leader, if he'd have got an eye on the ball, he might have been able to pick this one up and score. The pressure from Randall Smith, and Orton just kind of carelessly flips it out there. And Lamont Thompson almost came up with a huge play for the Cougars. Third and 16. Sun tries to break through the clouds, the overcast skies. 6.03 to play. Here comes the blitz again. Orton got him. Sacked and dropped at the 8-yard line. Billy Newman, yeah. number 10. Good coverage downfield. It was not a full-scale blitz. They only showed a three-man rush, and then they brought one and dropped out. Here's the three-man, and then Newman is going to come from the corner and get Orton. Newman comes off the slot, and Orton not able to avoid him. He's got two sacks today now, Billy Newman. Travis Dorsch, they come after him. Don't block this one. And Eric Coleman at the 48 comes to the left side. Doesn't have much blocking help. Actually loses yardage across the 50 to the Washington State 49-yard line. Sean Phillips, 40-yard punt. Minus two on the return. You just got to keep your head about you. Every time, every now and then, you need a little kick in the butt. Um, just be the right person overall, and I, and I think, uh, thank him a lot for uh, everything that he's done. Jason Gesser, who said he uh, spoke with Jack Thompson on the phone yesterday. Jack now living in Seattle, not here for the game. Here's Gesser back to throw. Screen pass, left side. And they have found... Dave Minnick out of the backfield, number 34. That's a gain of 11. You got to do some things to take some of the steam out of this Purdue defense. I mean, Aiken Ad Adele is so quick off the ball. Watch him coming off the corner here. I mean, he beats the block. He's off the ball. Do something to slow him down. The screen is a perfect way to do that. Invite the rush in and then get a little blocking out there and throw it to your back. Do some things to offset that aggressiveness of the defense. Now Gesser and the Cougars will go from the spread on first down at the Purdue 40. Again, the blitz, the quick one. That's caught by Riley. Little crossing pattern underneath, and Riley inside the 15 and hauled down at the 9. Best throw that Jason Gesser has made in a long time. He knew the blitz was coming. He stood right in there, and he delivered the ball right where it needed to be. 
beat Reeves on the coverage. Jerome Riley, the coaches told us over the last few weeks of the season, he was the best receiver, the most productive receiver they had. A junior out of Arleta, California. That's five catches for him today. And a first and goal from the nine in a game that's tied 20 all. And it off to Minnick up the middle. Nice drive. To the five yard line. Stop made by Sean Phillips, number 22. So you throw the screen, you take a little of the steam out of them, you throw the ball down the field against the blitz, then you come back with the run. You're able to mix in everything you do. And it's, again, this is an offense that coming into the ball game averaged 440 yards per game. It was the fourth best offensive year ever at Washington State. And they've had some good offenses. So this offense led by Jason Gesser has been productive all year. Second down, quarterback draw. Gesser to the one-yard line. He did not get in. He was very close. He's a very mobile guy. This is a design play. He's got a lead block. Easy for you to say. Yeah. <laughs> not able to get the football across the goal line, though. No. At that point, he tried to reach out, not able to uh, extend the football across the flank. But inside the one-yard line for the Cougars. Third down. Game time. 20 all. That much. Timeout. Washington State uses one of its three, and Mike Price is a little exasperated by that. And uh, let's check in with Jill Arrington. Well, I'm here with honorary Purdue captain. Kenneth Pepe, I know that it's an honor for you to be here. You're a nine-year veteran of the NYPD. Tell me what inspirational words did you have for the Boilermakers today? Well, I told the Boilermakers, just come out and work as hard as you can and hit them hard. And I yelled at them a little bit, and they got real excited, and they told me I was their token captain, and they're going to do it for me. So let's give them all the luck they can, and good luck, uh, Purdue. Well, I see you wanting to suit up and get out there and enjoy the game, and we appreciate your service. Let's go over to Andre, who's with your friend on the fire department side. Yeah, I'm here with Fireman Woody McHale. He's in from New York as well. Just your thoughts on today's ball game, and what is what is Coach Price? You play Coach Price real quick and tell me what needs to be done to get to, uh, to, for Washington State to get going. Uh, these fellas are doing a great job. Just keep their heads up. Don't give up. Keep fighting. Fight, fight, fight. They're doing a great job. Both teams are doing a great job. Right. If you can, as you can tell, he's lost his voice. He's very into this game. Thanks, guys. Back up to you. All right, Andre. Thank you. Third and goal. Quarterback Snake. Gesser. There's a penalty, though. Flag is down, thrown on the far side. It may just be that Purdue lined up off sides. A nice little quarterback sneak by Jason Gesser. He hesitated a little bit. Now Conference USA is holding a meeting again. There we are, touchdown. Gesser on the quarterback sneak. Take a look again now. Jason Gesser is going to hesitate and then go to the right side. And clearly, he and the ball well over the, the goal line for the touchdown. And here comes the extra point. Drew Dunning. Up and good. Washington State has broken the tie. They're up by seven. And then Stubble Field with a three-yard touchdown catch. Extra point was good. And Doris just before halftime into the wind from 51 yards away. It was 2017 at the half. Dunning with another field goal tied it up at 20 all. And then just a moment ago, Jason Gesser from a yard out. The extra point good. And Washington State has reclaimed the lead. 3.04 to go third quarter. Holiday with the kick. And again, boy, what a potent weapon that is on special teams. He nails it. Touchback. Purdue will start from the 20-yard line. 
in the Seattle Bowl as we uh, give you a recap of bowl games played thus far. Alabama won. AM over TCU 28 to 9. Don't know that there's been a better game played than Texas and Washington. Yeah. Major Apple From the 20. 27 20. Washington State. Joey Harris in the backfield now. And Purdue goes deep for Stanford. Adjustment in the battle for the ball. Lamont Thompson was covering, and he was doing so well. I'm impressed with Lamont Thompson. I mean, he's a free safety. He's a big, rangy guy at 220 pounds, and he's able to get out there and make plays on wide receivers out in the open field. The guy who is making his 34th start in his career today sat out last season had a neck injury and, and just took the whole year off to recover from it and came back for this is uh his senior year actually his fifth year and had a great year second down from the 20 second and 10. quick flip left side stanford has the grab and uh he is driven out of bounds at the 27 yard line by eric coleman Washington State's flying around a little more here in the third quarter. I mean, their defense is getting after him a little bit more. The pressure is getting to Kyle Orton a little bit more. Bill Dova, the defensive coordinator, able to kind of get his team settled down there at halftime, and they have uh, they've played very well here in the third quarter. Third and three. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Randall Smith. Boy, he's having a wonderful game. He sure is. He's coming on a blitz. He's not able to get to the quarterback, but he does the next best thing. He gets his hands up and knocks the football down. Here he is right here. Watch him come in. Eyeballs on the quarterback. Times his jump and knocks the pass down. Lamont Thompson almost got another pick. Here's Dorsch with the kick. Coleman is back, awaits it, grabs it at the 34-yard line. He's got the move. And forced out of bounds across the 45 in the Washington State bench area at the 47-yard line. Well, Kyle Orton starting his third game ever. Looked very strong in the second quarter. Yeah, he started out three of nine. This was early, and then he started to... He had the inter interception to Jason Day, but then he started to get on track. Found Taylor's double field a couple times. Hit him with the touchdown. And, but then here recently, another interception to start the third quarter to Lamont Thompson. And, and has not looked as sharp here in the third quarter as he did in that second period. First down now. 27-20 Washington State with the lead. Gesser and Purdue with a delayed rush. Gesser goes deep left side. Got knocked around. Nice pass. Laid it out, and McElrath with the grab. About the last two or three throws, Jason Gesser has looked like the way Jason Gesser looked this season. He's had his feet up underneath him. He's looked comfortable in the pocket, and he's made the accurate throw. The pump fake, the out and up by McElrath, and a perfect throw. Here's McElrath in the slots, a little out and up for a wheel route, and he runs by the linebacker. And a nice throw. That's a gain of 32. Here's Gesser, left side. Riley inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Stuart Schweigert with the tackle, the free safety. Here's Riley. The blitz went right off of him. So the man, he knows he's going to probably get the football as a hot receiver because the blitz was the guy that lined up over top of him. As soon as he saw that, he looked for the football, and look at that, the yards per completion. Washington State starting to get it cranked up. Jason White, number 13, on the field now for Washington State. He's one of the three receivers split wide right. Here's Gesser, lobs it into the end zone. McElrath tipped away nicely. Yeah. Ball hung in the air a little bit too much. McElrath is a, is a tall receiver as well, but Woodyard... Pretty good himself, a fifth-year senior, and he's a big guy. He's 6'2", 209 pounds, so he doesn't get pushed around by a wide receiver. Jason Gesser 
didn't have quite enough on that one. WSU, 2 of 11, third down conversions, third and one. Out of the spread. Here comes the blitz. Across the middle, too high. And that time, Jason Gesser, I think he threw it a little too early. He kind of threw it back and up. He didn't step into it real, real well. And the ball sailed on him. Purdue came with a blitz, but that time the offensive line did a pretty nice job of picking it up. And Jason Gesser not able to stick it in there. That'll bring on Drew Dunning. He is two of two thus far. And this one from 30 yards out. Dunning 16 of 20 on the year, including today's play. High snap. Hold is down good. And the kick is perfect. So Dunning with his third field goal. And Washington State, under the leadership of Mike Price, takes the lead. Mike Price, born in Denver, but he grew up in Everett, Washington. <laughs> and uh, I've been saving this for a little bit. Mike and I discovered that we, uh, we grew up within six blocks of each other. I got him by a couple of years, but uh, I lived in Everett till I was 12, and Mike Price and I went to the same elementary school, George Washington Elementary on Rockefeller. That's uh, a lot more than you needed to know or wanted to. But I want to hear you sing the fight song. Uh, we did the other I night. I want to hear you sing it now. Uh, I only sing that when Mike Price and I are together. <laughs> the Everett High School fight song. <laughs> well, Mike Price uh, went to Everett Junior College where his dad was a coach and then uh, played at Washington State. He ultimately transferred to the University of Puget Sound and uh, completed his athletic career there has been the head coach at Washington State for the last 13 years, and he and his wife, Joyce, just a wonderful couple. They met when they were in the first grade. Here's the kick. And again, a touchback. Coming January 15th on CBS, the creator of JAG brings you a new drama that dares to take you inside the Supreme Court. Joe Montaigne and James Garner star in First Monday. Don't miss the series premiere Tuesday, January 15th on CBS. It's interesting how the game, you know, the flow of a game changes. And in the second quarter, the Purdue defense really stepped up and kind of took control of the game. And now in the third quarter, the Washington State defense has kind of stepped up and taken over the game a little bit. On first down, here's Orton. Pulls up and fires it into the Washington State bench area. You can do that. Some of the Washington State fans booing, but as long as the quarterback leaves the, the pocket area, he can throw it away as long as that ball crosses the line of scrimmage, which it did. We talked about him going to that Elite 11 quarterback camp in California. He had already committed to Purdue before he went, and Drew Brees was one of the counselors at that camp, and he just got a chance to kind of hang out with Drew the whole week and pick his brain and really learned a lot of football that week from Drew Brees. Here's Orton coming right, hit as he lets it go, and this one's into the Purdue bench area. And Orton popped pretty well. Uh, Joe Tiller. Mike Price's good friend on the Purdue sideline. 59 years of age. And he has really revived this Purdue program. Look at this. Five straight bowl seasons. Yep. And uh, they were in the doldrums for a decade or more. And the expectation levels have changed at Purdue because of Joe Tiller. I mean, he came in and won right away. They won a Big Ten championship sooner than anybody thought. There's the rush. Flags are down. Orton with a free play goes deep, and it's tipped away at the last minute. At the 40-yard line, tipped away by Jason David, intended for Morales. I think the penalty is going to go against Purdue, a holding penalty. Penalties declined. Fourth down. Take a look. It's, it's on the right side. It's either going to be Tyler Moore or it's going to be Montrell Lowe. Well, ah, there's Tyler Moore with the takedown. Didn't quite get him down, but... Hog tied him anyway, or 
hornswoggled him or whatever you say down here. What do you say? <laughs> Hornswoggle will do. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good Texas word. <laughs> they can get you out of Canton, but not for long. <laughs> Here's Coleman <laughs> out of bounds at the 27 yard line. 59 yard punt and six on the return, and that is the third successive three and out. Yeah forced by this Washington State defense. Yeah, and again, the credit goes to the Washington State defense and Bill Doba, the adjustments they made at halftime, they've been able to turn up the pressure a little bit more. And here come the uh, Cougars back on the field, leading by 10 with 40 seconds to go, third quarter. Just amazing how Gesser seemed to settle down. Yeah. Uh, he was 7 of 26 at one point, and then the last couple of series. He hit a couple. You know, he hit a couple nice throws, and a, your confidence comes back quickly. Goes deep, man coverage, right side, adjustment on the ball. And McElrath, who was not a factor at all in the first half, has his second big catch in the third quarter. Now, see, Mike Bush is the basketball player, but this is just a jump ball, and it's thrown to McElrath. This ball is up for grabs. Whichever guy wants it can get it. But the problem is Rodgers has no idea where the ball is until it's too late. He's turning and running. McElrath knows exactly where it's at. Stops, finds the football, and Rodgers has no chance. But that ball's thrown up for grabs. The receiver just makes the play. A 34-yard gain and a first down at the 38-yard line. Here's Gesser. This one a little too high intended for Jerome Riley. 15 seconds to go in quarter number three. Nicoa McElrath, three for 70 yards in this ball game. And for the season, you see their combined efforts. 67 catches for McElrath. 45 for Bush. And yeah, both nine touchdowns. And they both can go up and get the football in the crowd. Second and 10, reverse. McElrath goes right. He's weaving his way inside the 30 and down at the 25. That's a gain of 13. And Washington State is assuming control of this game. Well, a little reverse. We haven't seen this from Washington State. Another way to take some of that aggressiveness away from a team. Jerome Riley, another wide receiver with the block. But a well-designed play to end the third quarter for Washington State. That is the end of three with our score, 30-20 Cougars. We'll return to El Paso, Texas, and the Sun Bowl right after this message and a word from your local station. Here's your chance. Introducing the Blockbuster Great Games Giveaway. Come in today for your chance to win one of 1,000 of the hottest game systems around. Xbox. GameCube. PlayStation 2 or Game Boy Advance. All you have to do is rent or buy anything in the store and you're automatically entered to win. It's the Blockbuster Great Games Giveaway. Blockbuster, open on New Year's Day. CBS 2 works for you. Dr. Michael Breen. Bringing practical experience and real medical expertise to you. We're working for you by separating the fat from the fad. And making complicated medical news more understandable. When it comes to your health, CBS 2 works for you. As the Bears roll towards the playoffs, lock into CBS 2. Mike Adamley has the inside line into our Chicago Bears. CBS 2 works for you. New Year resolutions, celebrity news scenes, and star weddings next DT. 7,812 on a cloudy day and chilly as well. We begin the fourth quarter and Washington State leading by 10, 30-20 and threatening. Gesser, quick back up, left side. He's got McElrath open, and McElrath out of bounds <coughs> at the 20-yard line. Washington State trailing at the uh, at the uh, halftime by three. But Todd, they really grabbed this thing by the throat here. Yeah, the they quarter. did a great job coming out of the locker room. Special teams got a good field position the whole quarter. Defense stepped it up, really took charge. And then the offense kind of responded, and they outgained Purdue in that third quarter, 157 to 29, so they've really assumed control of the football game here in the second half. And threatening now with the second down and five. Gesser looking right, goes deep right side, and that one is intercepted in the end zone. Rodgers 
Antoine Rogers. Well, this was a bad decision by Jason Gessler. He thought he had single coverage, man coverage, and it was really not man because Rogers was just kind of drifting back there, and he came off of the early or the inside route and just drifted back with the quarterback. Watch, this is Rogers. Now he's not going to stay with Mike Bush. He's going to keep drifting back on this corner route. He doesn't stay short. He reads the quarterback and drifts right back to where the football is and makes the interception. Gesser thought he had single coverage to McElrath, but he ended up throwing into double coverage. After the turnover, ball up to 20. Here's Orton back to throw. He's going deep. Way downfield for Stanford, tipped away by the All-American Lamont Thompson. He's really a good player. Yes, I mean, he, he's a fun guy to watch. I mean, he's a rangy guy. Stanford has excellent speed, but Thompson gets over there, helps out Billy Newman and does what a free safety's supposed to do. He plays center field. He helps out on the deep route. See that second line, the eight interceptions this season, tied a record held by Richard Reed, but uh, Thompson's ninth interception earlier today. Yeah, and four of those came in one game against UCLA. That's right. Stanford gets the uh, grab five yards after the 25-yard line. That's gonna set up a third down. Big play right here for Kyle Orton. You know, the, the defense comes up, makes a play. They stop the bleeding a little bit. A conversion here, and they can start to swing momentum maybe a little bit back to them. Third and five. Three down. Cougars are blitzing, bringing everybody. Nice play. That's a first down at the 32-yard line. Seth Morales with the tackle, number 84, with the uh, catch, rather, number 84. Good protection on the inside, too. You called the blitz, and they were coming. The dude did a nice job of sealing them off and, and giving Kyle Wharton the time to make that throw to Morales. First and ten, Boilermakers. Out of the spread again. Flag is down. Orton chased right by Malway, the middle linebacker, and the pass incomplete. Now we'll check the uh, check the penalty. Offside on the defense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. First and five. Iowa to Texas Tech in the Alamo Bowl. And uh, Syracuse convincingly over Kansas State. A couple of games coming up after this one. Washington <laughs> State, uh, not only a big game for their school, but kind of carrying the banner for the Pac-10 right now. The Pac-10 0 for 3 in bowl games right now. Here's the blitz again. Orton. Find Stratton is tight end, and that's going to be uh, good for yardage out to the 44-yard line. Billy Newman with a tackle, number 10. <laughs> Billy Newman's uh, going to go from here to Orlando to play in the uh, Gridiron Classic. Nice all-star game down there in Orlando. Stratton has just tied uh, a Sun Bowl record, ninth reception of the day. So Freddie Mitchell did catch nine for UCLA last year. Here's uh, Montrell Lowe out of the spread to the 49-yard line. 30-20. Washington State, the dominant team offensively in this second half of play. Yeah, they, they finally started to get in a groove offensively, and then their defense really stepped up. And the field position was a big key, too. Washington State was operating from about midfield almost that whole third quarter, and every time Purdue got the ball, they were on their own 20 or worse. Second down and five. Tried to throw, couldn't sack. 
Isaac Brown, number nine, got there. And these guys are not very big, but they are quick. I mean, Isaac Brown is a defensive end. And he's rushing right here, number nine. He's kind of following the quarterback, and then when he sees him vulnerable, he goes and gets him. He's a defensive end who only weighs 220 pounds. So he's got to utilize his quickness and speed to make plays. Third and nine following the fourth sack of the afternoon. Orton across the middle. He's got a wide receiver. Double field inside the 40 and a first down Purdue. Gain of 23. That time Washington State chose not to blitz. They had guys up there showing blitz, but they dropped out into zone. And that enabled Kyle Orton to stay back there and find the crossing route. Under 12 to go. And a first down 10 now. Noel breaks out wide to the right side. Three-man rush. Out of the backfield, low. Nice throw. Sure was. That's a gain of 12. <laughs> Powerful little guy. Again, he just kind of sneaks in there. He hides in there and waits for a little crease. And then when he sees it, he plants. And then you see the power, the compactness of how he can run. Ran right through the tackle of Billy Newman. That's a gain of 12. He's got 45 yards for the afternoon. A first down, Purdue. Moving well on this possession. Uh, Stubblefield and Stamford both split wide to the left. Looks like the blitz is coming. It is. Orton goes deep left side for Stubblefield and can't find him. Well, Kyle Orton hopes to become a great quarterback before his career, career is through at Purdue. Look at the uh, list of quarterbacks who played for both these schools. You know, pretty impressive. Very impressive in both places. Lenny well, Dawson from Alliance, Ohio, right down the street from where I live. Well, they just, uh, you know, they both had such good passing offenses and coaches that coached the passing game. And, and Mike Price has just done a great job here in the last couple of years. Here's Orton out of the backfield. Tight end. Tim Stratton has now caught 10 in this game, setting a new Sun Bowl record. Well, he's had 10 catches, and Randall Smith has had at least 10 tackles, too. He was right there on the play. You see Stratton in the middle of the field against the blitz. That's, that's been kind of their bread and butter against the blitz, is to try to hit the tight end quickly over the middle. Third and six from the 20. Deep has a man up, it's off. Cuts back and it's Lamont Thompson with his 10th interception of the season, second today. Well, Kyle Orton wishes he had this back because if he did, he'd have put this one on a string instead of floating it. He was going for double field right down the seam and he doesn't see Lamont Thompson just hanging back there. See, he sees it open there. If he drills it, maybe he sticks it in, but because the ball kind of hung in the air, it enabled Lamont Thompson to do what he does best, make interception. Big play for the Cougars. 112 inside the Sun Bowl and a couple of guys who decided to uh, take the less expensive route. That's a, that's a long climb. Yeah. On first down, Gesser is popped as he lets it go, wow. and it is caught at the other end. Wow! McElrath with another big play in the second half. Just watching the change in Jason Gesser. I mean, balls that he threw earlier in the game under pressure that didn't look like they had a chance. Now, same kind of throw up in the air, but you cannot throw it any better. They went after the best corner, Woodyard, but you just can't defend a throw like that. A 41-yard gain, and Gesser was under terrific pressure when he let the ball go. First and 10 at the 39. Left side, Dave Minnick. And he busts loose inside the 30. 
And let's check in once again with Andre Ware. Guys, all the pressure that Jason Getz has seen all afternoon, he's not going to throw for a high percentage. But what it does, it allows him to throw outside to one-on-one -on -one to McElrath and Bush. He's doing a fine job in the second half of completing those passes down the sideline in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Back up to you guys. Yeah, he really is. And, and you can see it in his eyes. I mean, he's just kind of got the feel back that he feels like he can make the plays again. There's Minnick again. Dave Minnick, the 20, soon to be 28-year-old senior. His birthday coming up on January 18th. Got a little emotional yesterday when he was chatting with us about this, his final game for Washington State. Did he tell us what it all meant after it was over? He didn't want to talk about it too much. Second down and six. He was also very excited to meet you. I mean, normally when we go places, everybody's excited to meet Jill. Right. Dave Minnick was excited to meet Vern Lundquist. It's, he's, an, it's he's a great Vern Lundquist. Yeah, it's an old man recognizing an older man. <laughs> Yeah, we, uh, t Todd and I travel the country, uh... Defense, offside, five-yard penalty, still second down. We, uh, have a great good fortune of escorting Jill Arrington around the Southeast Conference each year. Yeah. <laughs> he just take, takes a lot of photographs with folks, but I didn't, you, you were right up there with her yesterday. What do you think, Jill? Hey, I have a hard job here. I'm working. <laughs> I don't pay attention to all that. <laughs> second down at the 19. You know what's amazing about this Washington State football team, and, and we talked to Mike Price about it, is they're so different than the team that went to the Rose Bowl in 97. The team that went to the Rose Bowl had one injury the whole year. Right. Same starters all the way through. This team hasn't started the same 22 guys in two consecutive weeks all year. They averaged 58 players a game, which is an incredible number. Uh, just because of so many people that got hurt and the way they had to change, but he said it's been the most resilient football team he's ever coached, and they just found ways to win. It was, it was totally different than when they had their great year in 97, but the numbers very, very similar. Well, trying, as we said, uh, to become the third team in Washington State history to win 10 games. Did so in 1929, the Rose Bowl team that lost to Michigan in 2000. Uh, 1997, and uh, then this team could become the third team to win 10. I don't know who the quarterback was uh, in that Aloha Bowl on the other side, though, that Washington State beat. I, I think his name was Ware or something like that. <laughs> There's a bubble. And uh, when they unravel people, we'll see where the ball is spotted. Fourth down. Come back on it. Andre, did you play against uh, Washington State in that Aloha Bowl? <laughs> it was the worst afternoon of my football career, Todd. I, I mean, it was a terrible afternoon. But give, give credit to, uh, to Washington State. They played outstanding that afternoon. Andre didn't have many bad days as a Houston Cougar. That's, that's for sure. sure. Here's Dunning for the field goal attempt. The hold is down. The kick is up, and it is perfect as he has been today. Drew Dunning from 37 yards out, and that increases the Cougars' lead. They're up by 13. ...of the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl. He's sponsored by Wells Fargo Bank. www.wellsfargo.com. America Online version 7.0. There's never been a better time to get online. And by the United States Army, an army of one. 7.37 left in this one. And Washington State up by 13, 33-20. In the 68th Annual Sun Bowl in El Paso. Five of seven kickoffs have been touchbacks. This one into the wind will be returned for Holiday. And uh, double field brings it out to the 23-yard line. Well, time now for the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. We talked about this at the very beginning of the broadcast. Forced turnovers, both teams capable of, of uh, takeaways, but who could capitalize with points off those turnovers? And you see Washington State, 20 points on the five. And Purdue, 
only seven on the four. Get complete bowl game stats at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online, keyword CBS Sports Live. Orton comes left on first down. Sandiford makes the grab. Marcus Tufant misses the initial tackle, and then James Price catches up with him. Well, we've called his name a lot. Lamont Thompson, the free safety out of Richmond, California, has had a nice ball game. Two interceptions. He's had about 10 tackles in the ball game. He's knocked down several passes. This pass completes to Stanford across the middle for the first down. And there is uh, Lamont Thompson in his uh, final game for Washington State. Nine tackles today, two interceptions. First down, 10, Purdue. Bring this one back, a flag thrown on the far side of the field. A very thoughtful guy when we talked to him yesterday. He was a guy that when you asked him a question, he kind of hesitated, kind of paused and made sure he heard it and understood the question and then very eloquent in the way he answered. He was an impressive kid. Now uh, the school, here's uh, Orton going right, throwing it off balance and out of bounds. The bowl season, the bowl game results don't count in the official MTAA stats, but uh, schools opt, in the case of uh, Washington State, I know, to, to count the bowl game in the regular season stats, so Thompson's going to have credit for 10, right? 6.37 to go in this one, 33.20. Davis, number six, with the sack back inside the 25-yard line. That's the fifth sack today. And this is one that's not supposed to happen because this is not an all-out blitz. It's just Shavies right here is just going to overpower the fullback in their blocking. He just runs right through the block of Cedric Brown and gets to the quarterback. And a flag thrown on the near side and the far side. Symphony of Yellow. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Now, Jimmy Rogers, who was our host with the Sun Bowl, he was inducted a couple of years back into the legends of the Sun Bowl. Jimmy has been a businessman here all of his life. He and his wife, Jody, have become dear friends over the years. Neat guy. Third down. And Orton goes deep for Stubblefield. Diving catch is made up at the 50-yard line. How about that for a third down conversion? <laughs> I think they got exactly what they needed. No blitz, and so Orton able to hang in there and hang in there and wait for it to open and then find Stubblefield. And you see the strength of Kyle Orton's arm. And he really does have an impressive arm. And he's a guy, a young kid, that's just going to get better and better. Third and 28, and they get 28. Now Orton looks deep, can't find anybody open. Struggles forward and gets five on his own to the 45-yard line. Tupo, Tupo. There's Stubblefield. He's got eight catches today for 144 yards. So Stratton, the tight end with 10, and Stubblefield with eight. And Taylor will be able to, to go home uh, some this summer and uh, hold his head up no matter what happens in this game back to Yakima, Washington. 54 passing attempts today. Across the middle, caught. Remember when Drew Brees threw for 82 yeah. times in a game at Wisconsin and <laughs> the Purdue guys were threatening us with trying 85 yeah. passes today. Well, they're encroaching on that figure. You know, one of, the, one of the ironic things about that game when he threw 83 times too, Tim Stratton, the all-time leading receiver at Purdue, only two games in his career he never caught a pass. One was this year against Ohio State, and the other one was that game when Drew Brees threw 83 times, not one completion to Tim Stratton. Every other game in his four-year career, he caught a pass. Mike Reinhart with that catch. And it's 
First down and 10. Right side, tipped away, incomplete. Jason, Jason David. Yeah. He was right there in position for his third interception of the day. Read that play extremely well. Kevin Noel, the intended receiver. Second down and 10. Time called. We'll be back in a moment. Seven to go in the Sun Bowl. Second down, and here's Orton going deep across the middle, incomplete. A little confusion on that uh, route. Tim Stratton and Kyle Orton a little mixed up there. But as has been the case here in the second half, Washington State able to get to Kyle Orton. They didn't do it in the first half, but they certainly have done it in the second half. Third and ten, Clemson defeating Louisiana Tech and Michigan State over Fresno State. Louisville at the half. Third and ten. Orton under pressure, incomplete. Fourth and ten. John Standiford, the intended receiver. Joe Tiller came out of Toledo, Ohio. Said he wasn't uh, offered a collegiate scholarship, athletic scholarship at a Big Ten school, and was offered one at Montana State in Bozeman. So he uh, took up that opportunity, graduated from Montana State, began his coaching career in late 60s as an assistant there. Spent quite some time in Calgary in the Canadian Football League up until the mid-80s. Here's the pass left. And it's good for the first down. Stanford inside the 30. Joe now 59 years of age. He and his wife Arnett have some property in Buffalo, Wyoming. He said ultimately that's where they'll wind up. Head coach at Wyoming, of course, for six years. And time has been called by Washington State. That's their last one. Now we've got the Sun Bowl. Beautiful setting here in El Paso at the southern end of the Rocky Mountain. Kyle Orton, 60 passes today. He's about to try his 61st. Deep in the end zone, overthrown in the end zone. Standiford was the intended receiver. I don't know that this is exactly what Joe Tiller wanted to get back to with the Purdue offense, but I know this is more what he's comfortable with, throwing the football. Early in the year, they, they were a little more conservative. They thought they'd be good on defense, thought they'd be good in the kicking game, knew that they were going to be young on offense, so they tried to play a little bit differently. But here, ever since they've gone with Kyle Orton, they've been airing it out again. He threw it 60 four times in his only in his first start against Indiana 52 times against Notre Dame and now we'll break all those records today incomplete Jim Taney right here he's the offensive coordinator at Purdue he was a, a nose guard at Central Missouri but he said trapped in that body was always a cornerback that was trying to get out and, uh, he's done a, a real nice job as Joe Taylor's offensive coordinator Third and ten. Four wide outs. Orton completes the pass, stops the clock on the out of bounds play. Standiford with a catch. And that will bring up a fourth down. Fourth and one. Well, if I was Washington State here, I would expect to, to see the ball going to Tim Stratton, number 89. It's in those short yardage situations, he's been the guy they've tried to get the ball to. On fourth and one, blitz coming. Orton goes right side, incomplete. Ball goes over on downs. It was intended. 
for Tim Stratton. And Washington State holds. Purdue with three timeouts can still stop the clock. And the Cougars from Pullman, Washington. Under four minutes away from capturing their 10th victory of the year. Like we said earlier in the in the game, they feel like next year is the year that uh, that they could be really good. They'll lose a few key guys: Nicola McElrath, Lamont Thompson, Randall Smith will be gone. Here's Dave Minnick, number 34, playing his final game. Soon to be 28 years old. Well, of course, uh, all college games were postponed in the aftermath of September 11th. The scheduled game for that weekend for Washington State was Colorado. The game unable, unable to be rescheduled, so was canceled. Montana State uh, took the place of the schedule. But look what would have happened if Colorado had defeated Washington State on the 15th. Well, it was such a, a key game as it all plays out anyway, because if, if they would have played and Washington State would have won, there's a good chance that Oregon would have been the number two team playing against Miami in the Rose Bowl. So either way, that game, when it was all said and done, was a huge game that was never played. Purdue uses the first of its allotment of three timeouts. And we've got three minutes remaining in the game. Coming up tonight on CBS, a night of great television, starting with The King of Queens, followed by Yes, Dear, and Monday's number one comedy, Everybody Loves Raymond. Then don't miss The Ellen Show on a special night, followed by 48 Hours Tonight on CBS. Well, those of you who are Cougar fans probably have already uh, become aware of next year's schedule, but... They'll open with Nevada and Idaho, then at Ohio State, Boise State, then they get into Pac-10 play, and uh, finally conclude the season at Hawaii. You know, going back to that game that was canceled with Colorado, and Mike Price talked about, you know, one of the things that, that he was upset about that as much as anything is that they don't often get those big teams to come into Pullman to play, but that was a game that was supposed to be played in Pullman, and... Uh, uh, obviously, a game they would have had a great chance of winning, but uh, Mike Bryce got a nice football team. They are uh, on their way to winning their 10th game this year and uh, maybe even better a year from now. 33 of 64 for Orton, 15 of 39. And I guess he's going to put it up again. That's a bit of a surprise. Flag is down. <laughs> Brady Doe with the hold, a backup safety, kind of out of position there trying to run. Holding on the defense. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. And here's a Boilermaker schedule for 2002. They'll open with Illinois State, then at Notre Dame and Western Michigan. Have a home game against Wake Forest. The Big Ten schedule to follow. After the hold, first down at the 35-yard line. And the handoff to Dave Minnick out to the 40 yard line on first down. Well, the crowd's thinning out here. There will be a few folks in the Rose Bowl. January 3rd? Yeah, there will be. And uh, you, you look at this the way I look at the game and break it down. I think Nebraska has a huge edge in the run offense. Miami, pass offense, run defense, and pass defense. A slight edge in special teams. And I think Nebraska has an edge, the intangibles. Uh, I think two things. Number one, I think they have a little more incentive because they were so thoroughly embarrassed the last time they played against Colorado. And they've had a month to live with that. I think also Najee Davenport being out for Miami is a huge factor for the Hurricanes. He's a key part of their team. And then Eric Crouch, I think, is the other intangible. I just think he, the Heisman Trophy winner and running that option, uh, I think Nebraska's going to win the football game. 
Well, how about the Colorado-Oregon game? I think Oregon's going to win that football game. Uh, I think they're both going to be very, very entertaining football games. And uh, uh, obviously, if Nebraska does beat Miami, then we've got a, a, a split or co-national championship situation uh, for the end of the season. On second down, Dave Minnick is caught for a loss at the 38-yard line. Stuart Schweigert. Purdue uses his final timeout. And just a moment ago, Mike Price, Jason Gesser, that's a young quarterback talking to an old one. <laughs> Mike Price was uh, a quarterback at Everett High School and one year at Everett Junior College, then went to Washington State, as we told you earlier, finished his collegiate career. Actually, was redshirted as a quarterback, and they made him a defensive back, so he went transferred to Puget Sound. Graduated from the University of Puget Sound. Two thirty-nine to go, third and six. Mike Price has got two sons that are in coaching. His one son, Eric, who used to be on his staff, left to be with the New York Jets this year. And then his other son, Aaron, actually coaches the quarterback here for him at Washington State. Also the punters and kickers. Pass left side incomplete, stops the clock, it'll be fourth down. And time now for our Army player of the game. And uh, we have chosen Lamont Thompson. Two interceptions today, nine tackles, defended three passes. The All-American free safety Lamont Thompson of Richmond, California. The Army player of the game. Alan Cox will punt on fourth down. Taken by Morales at the 23. And tackled at the 27. Curtis Nettles with the tackle. This is Aiken Adel, who's uh, the best defensive lineman on the team, gets tangled up with one of the best special team players at Washington State, the special team's captain, Jeremy Thielbar. Thielbar. First down and 10. Both teams out of timeouts, and here's Orton deep down the middle. That was incomplete. And it'll be second down and 10. They may not have been kidding. They may get for 83 passes they today. Might. They convert a couple third downs, they might. Two nineteen to go. Well, this will be our final football broadcast, collegiate football broadcast of uh, 2001. Started out September 22nd in the aftermath of the uh, postponed game. to go third and three I wonder if Mike Price is going to get the uh, the ice water bath here today <laughs> I'd say there's a pretty decent chance he will nice way for Tim Stratton to finish his Purdue career there's Stratton with another catch over the middle and the clock will stop as they move the chain. 2.05 to go in this one. 32 rushes, 68 passes. Good, nice. 69. Orton, deep left side. There's double field, got it! Touchdown! 51 yards! Don't go anywhere yet, folks. <laughs> We're within a touchdown. And this is prevent defense. 
A four-man rush picked up easily by Purdue, and then you just don't let this happen at this point in the game. Eric Coleman just let Stubblefield run by him, and if anything, you want to keep everything in front of you with a 13-point lead. Doors with the extra point. Got it. yards for Taylor Stubblefield, the new Sun Bowl record. Well, they hit the big play to Stubblefield earlier in the game on a similar route down the seam. It was our Exxon and Mobile virtual playbook, the seam route, and uh, Stubblefield for the second time makes the connection with Kyle Orton. Now, we should see the onside kick here with only a minute and 53 left, but Purdue has no timeout, so they can't afford to kick it deep and hope that their defense can stop them. They cannot stop the clock. And again, a reminder of the uh, lineup for tonight on CBS. King of Queens, yes, dear, everybody loves Raymond, the Ellen Show. And 48 hours. That's the lineup tonight on CBS. Onside kick coming. 446 for Purdue, 366 for Washington. Both kickers are on the field. Scott Kurz and Dorsch, number 11 and number 30. Kirkery. Yeah. Slate of hand. Deceit. A very unusual formation, too, for Purdue. Have to move the ball back uh, an inch and a half to make it legal. It's Dorsch. There's the hand. James! Purdue's got it! Billy Newman for Washington State tried to catch it. And he had the first shot at it, but could not make a clean catch. And Seth Morales of Purdue is, is going to come up with it. The kick by Dorch, it goes up in the air, and Billy Newman is right there, goes off his helmet, and Seth Morales right there to collect the football. You want that ball to take a high bounce, which it did, and Billy Newman not able to make the play. First down and 10 from the 49-yard line. Orton steps up, comes to his left, pulls up and fires it, caught inside the 30. Lock stops until they reset the chain. Stanford with a grab, a 21-yard catch. See, one of the problems is there on that last possession, Washington State kind of playing conservatively, and they got away from what got them where they were in this ballgame defensively, playing aggressive, attacking the quarterback. Now can they crank it back up here with the game on the line? Left side, Sandiford, out of bounds to stop the clock at the 21. The, the Washington State defense right now is playing on their heels a little bit. The whole second half, up until the last few minutes, they've been playing downhill, but right now, they're playing kind of in retreat. 38 of 70 for Orton. <laughs> 70 passes. My goodness. Second down and two. Orton pumps once, off balance, incomplete. Third down. And now Washington State, I'm sure memories of last year echoing somewhat throughout the team. They had four last second losses in the year 2000. And on their heels here, third down. The most important thing right now for Kyle Orton is to get this first down. Get a new set of downs, plus it'll stop the clock. There's a lot of time left, a minute 25, but you got to get this first down. Comes left again, dipped incomplete, fourth down. A little hitch pass trying to get the ball to double field and he called it deflected at the line of scrimmage. He was open. Fourth 
and two. And that's why I think you know, that third down conversion is so important so it doesn't come down to a fourth down play. Because now, you don't make it this time, you're done. Orton, pressure, hit, incomplete. Two plays in a row, they got their hands on the football. Randall Smith, who's had a huge game along with Lamont Thompson, got a knockdown on that one. My goodness. Ball goes over on downs with 1.17 to go. There's Woody McHale, the fireman, in the middle of the Washington State huddle. You know, the amazing thing, we heard Woody talk a couple times this week. He played on the fire department's football team for 12 years, and he lost 21 of his teammates in the tragedy. Randall Smith had an outstanding football game. And you know the amazing thing about those knockdowns is this is not a short quarterback. Kyle Orton is six foot four, a tall guy, but they were able to time it, get in the lane, and get up in the air and knock the ball down. Here's Orton trying to throw the quick slant. Pressure from Achilano. And Mike Price urging his guys on. Ten-win season for Mike Price and the Cougars of Washington State. Final 40 seconds of this one. The executive producer of the Home Depot SEC football, Terry Eworth, and the Sun Bowl as well. The coordinating producer, Craig Silver. Today's game directed by Bob Fishman. The coordinating producer of CBS Sports is Harold Bryant. The associate director for today's game, Fred Johnson. The associate producer, Roger Wilson, Michael Pierce. The broadcast associates, Debbie Bullock and Jason Greenberg. Technical managers, Bob Jamison and Nick Miro. And the technical director, Dennis Stone, our audio mixer, Jack Stockton. Up here in the booth, Chuck Gardner, Joe Castena, Matt Stein. It's been a great season. Woody McHale, the victorious honorary captain. Detective Kenneth Pepe happy as well. I'm sure that he was here. Mike Price and the Washington State Cougars win their 10th of the season. They hang on and defeat Purdue 33-27. to We go down to Andre Ware, who is with Mike Price. Cut you a little closer than you uh, than you expected today. Big, still a big win for the program and your seniors. Your thoughts? Was that the longest six minutes you've ever seen in your life? Oh, it's just great. That's the third team in the history of school to win 10 games. Great job by our defense, inspirationally. I think we made some super adjustments at halftime, obviously, to settle down and do a better job of protecting for Jason. So it was just lots of fun. Hey, once, once again, congratulations, Coach. Good luck Thank next you. year. Thank you. Thank you. Back up to you guys. Final score, 33-27. Purdue loses to Washington State. It's been a dandy here in El Paso. And again, the lineup tonight on CBS will begin with the King of Queens, Yes, Dear, Everybody Loves Raymond, The Ellen Show, and 48 Hours. So for our entire CBS sports crew, Andre Ware, Jill Arrington, Todd Blackledge, I'm Bert Lundquist saying so long from the Sun Bowl Stadium in El Paso. Again, the final score, 33-27, Washington State wins it. We'll see you again next fall. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. The college football season has come down to three days and four balls. Thursday in primetime, the national title...